I'd like to start today by explaining some of the characters in this saga. Who are, um, what are truthers or the truth movement? The truth movement started after the JFK assassination, where early on a large portion of the public didn't believe the official story. There were a lot of different conflicting accounts. And then it officially got its name in the media and culture after 9-11 when a lot of people, including a lot of officers, the military people, didn't buy all the official story we were told, and it became a pejorative or an insult by the corporate media to call people that questioned uh, big events truthers, and that people kind of adopted that term and said, okay, it's the truth movement, and so as confidence has been lost, things like the Gulf of Tonkin in 64, saying it was staged, attacks on our ships to start the Vietnam War, LBJ, that's, uh, as that happened, people lost more and more confidence until now you've got a spectrum where you've got people over here that would call themselves truthers that don't think anything's real. And they just think everything's fake. And I think they're crazy. And then you've got people that still question who I would say I'm more of in the middle and I've gone too far in the other direction as well. And I realized that years ago. And then you've got other people who are just as crazy as the far end of the truthers who think everything they're told is true and don't question anything. In fact, in a way, that's probably even crazier than thinking everything's fake. And so that's pretty much the best description of what truthers are. Are you familiar with a, a man named Steve Pachanik? Yes, I am. How long have you known him? I've known him 21 years. And um, who do you understand him to be? Uh, he ran psychological operations for the State Department and the CIA. He ran the Camp David Accords successfully. It was what he's first really known for. Uh, he ran regime change in countries. He created the Tom Clancy, Jack Ryan character and wrote those books. So he, 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 Jack Ryan's kind of hit who he is and his, his mind. And um, he gave us a lot of information over the years that turned out to be dead on and became a big source of information. He also got us a lot of connections in armed special operations that gave us a lot of intelligence that was really good. Like the intel when I said Russia will invade in late February and October of last year. I got that from armed special operations. And so he's just been an incredible source that was never wrong until uh, he was the one that really pushed me over the edge saying, no, it is staged. And it, 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 and I, I really just believed him, and I, I think he was wrong. How about... Um Dr. James Fetzer. I knew Fetzer. I interviewed Fetzer before Sandy Hook on his questions of 
he'd written some books on that, seemed very cogent and intelligent. Uh, and I, I, I really didn't go off a lot off, off his Sandy Hook stuff because I didn't read his book on Sandy Hook. His book, Nobody Died at Sandy Hook, which I don't believe. And we, we kind of had a falling out because as he got a, a, a little more wild after 9-11, he was thinking that uh, they used space-based weapons to disintegrate the towers. I thought that was a little too much. So that was kind of where he was. So I didn't go that much off him on, on Sandy Hook. And uh, he was never on the show, was he? Not on Sandy He was on about other things, but not, uh, not that I remember do a lot of shows, but not that I remember about Sandy Hook. How about Dr. James Tracy? He seemed credible. Uh, he was a university professor, seemed very well-spoken. And I, I believe he was interviewed by some of the other shows on Infowars. I don't, I don't remember interviewing him, but I remember seeing some of his reports, reading some of his articles and interviews. And uh, last, a, a gentleman we've heard a lot about, um, Wolfgang Halbig. Yes, I did interview Wolfgang Halbig, and, and, he, and he seemed credible when I was first reading what he was saying. Do you now realize that that was a big mistake? It was, and, and that was part of the reason I started to think Sandy Hook probably happened by 2015, 16 or so. When at first I thought that children probably actually died, but there might be some involvement by some of their various groups. It's hard to believe that, that Adam Lanza would do all that. It just seems so incredible. You're kind of in first stages of grief, even watching something is denial. And then over time, I kind of bought into what Halbert was saying and what Pachinik was saying. And then Halbig began to get mad at me. I don't remember exactly when, like 2015 or so, saying I was covering up because I wouldn't have him on. And he started visibly degenerating more. And so that's when I began to really think that I might have made a mistake, you know, unintentionally. Let's rewind and talk about December 14th, 2012, um, the day that Adam Lanza attacked the school. Where were you? I believe I was, I believe I was gotten to work by the time it was on the news and heard about it. I, I don't remember the exact details, I just remember it was just like unbelievable. What was your, what was your feeling when you saw what had happened? Anybody would have just shock, especially you have children, and I, of course, already had three children then, that something like that could happen, and that somebody could do something like that. And that, uh, just that it was possible, it's just, it's hard to believe. Why did you choose to cover Sandy Hook at all? And it was a top story in the country, and a lot of powerful forces were also using it to blame gun owners in general. And so a lot of people had resentment that they hadn't done anything illegal to gun, and they were they were being blamed for it collectively. So there was a lot of anger. Uh, back then, the show was more driven to calls, so we would open the phones up, and people were pre predominantly, I think, for a few weeks, calling in about it. As you sit here today, do you recall about how much coverage Infowars gave to the Sandy Hook school shooting in 2012? I would have to see notes, but I think it was like two and a half hours. I'd like to move into 2013. Um, in terms of the Sandy Hook story, what was going on uh, in 2013? A lot of pushes to restrict gun ownership. I mean, just a lot of uh, political fighting going on. During that time, you interviewed Steve Pachenik about the, the story. Why did you pick him? Did, did you reach out to him? Did he reach out to you? How did that? I reviewed the video, but it was a few weeks ago. I mean, I, I, I believe he was on other subjects, and I believe it came up. Or, and then I believe I, if, if it's interview you were talking about, I, I think I argued with him about it being totally staged. Mm -hmm. And then I... Found that hard to believe. During that time, not you, but another host interviewed uh, Dr. James Tracy. Do you recall that? Yes. Do you know why James Tracy was interviewed? 
it was a big topic on the internet, and I, I mean, the host usually set up their own guest. I, I don't think I watched it at the time, but I saw it later. At the time, were you or anyone else at InfoWars taking a strong position that no one had died at the school? No. We were having, when we did cover it, out of the thousands of hours, it was, it was a discussion of what happened there. And I knew that there had been other false flag events before where they actually killed people, so I... I still, in general, thought that that was what was happening. And one reason to interview Pachenik is he was a, a psychiatrist. He, he looked this up. It was like one of Guardian articles about it. Who was involved in some stuff in Europe? Um, knew about Operation Gladio and had been involved. What's Operation Gladio? That's a classified NATO state behind network program in Europe, Eastern Europe, Western Europe, Southern Europe, to stage terror attacks and blame it on the Russians during the Cold War, Operation Gladium. And Pachenik had been involved uh, in operations dealing with the uh, response, the kidnapping of the Italian, Italian Prime Minister, and things like that, and, and uh, the, the Red Brigade. And so I knew that he was on record uh, an expert on false flags. Let's move into 2014. Uh, the comprehensive report written by Detective Dan Jewis was issued uh, or released around that time, December 2013 or early 2014. Say that again, please. We've had testimony that the comprehensive report written by Dan Jewis, the detective for the Connecticut State Police, yes. was released to the general public in either very late 2013 or early 2014. Why didn't that end all discussion? I don't remember all the specifics. I know that it was a topic that the public was interested in, so it would resurface from time to time. It was not one of our main topics. Our main topics were wars and surveillance and police state. And, and I, but I do remember that they said a lot of it was, quote, still classified and redacted. I do remember there being a controversy about that, and that was what made some people uh, still think that uh, they were being lied to about what really happened there. Let me ask you, before we move on into 2014, if you recall, approximately how much time did InfoWars devote to the Sandy Hook story in 2013? I actually went over and have some notes. If I'm able to look at those, I, I could give would you... those refresh your recollection? Th they would. So I don't want to say the wrong numbers. Did you write some notes uh, after reviewing um, your documents in order to help you refresh your recollection while you testify here today? I believe that was the it, it evidence that you, you told me I need to review. You also told me to review the rules. Without, the, without saying what I told you to do. <laughs> yeah, yes, I reviewed that. And did you take some notes based on your review internally to refresh your recollection as to what had happened? Yes, I did. Okay, I, I rewatched them too. Would it help you to refer to your notes in terms of time periods? Yeah, yes, please. Yeah, I'm again object because of the discovery order that you have entered, which establishes that is not a complete list of videos, nor could it be used to refresh his memory of what complete list of videos. Yeah, actually, could you approach both of you, please?
based solely on your memory, without reference to any documents that you've reviewed, about how much coverage do you believe InfoWars gave to Sandy Hook in the year 2013? I believe it was four or five hours, less than one tenth of one percent. So let's talk about 2014. Um, you started, Wolfgang Halbig came on the show for the first time. Uh, I believe so. And can you tell us what led you to have Wolfgang Halbig on in 2014? He was on a lot of shows and he had a group of bullet points and my producer set him up on the show so I had him on. At the time, what if anything else was going on in your life? Uh, my uh, my family was falling apart. Um, I was in divorce. I'd like to refer you to the end of 2014. Um, we've had a video received in evidence of you stating your belief at that time that no one died at Sandy Hook, that the whole thing was fake. Do you understand as you sit here today how crazy that is? I have said before that there have been so many lies and so many things in the past and I was under a lot of pressure and I truly, when I said those statements, when I say something I mean it, that I really could believe that it was totally staged at that point and I was basing that off of really Steve Pachinik, who is, uh, has been a very prestigious person. Do you understand now that it was absolutely irresponsible of you to do that? It was, especially since I've met the parents, and uh, it's 100% it's, it's real, as I said on the radio yesterday, and as I said here yesterday, uh, it's 100% real, and the media still ran with lies that I was saying it wasn't real on air yesterday. It's incredible. They won't let me take it back. They just want to keep me in the position of being the Sandy Hook man. My son got confronted yesterday. Objection speculation as to what the media wants. Mr. Jones is just being on the show. Sustained. I'm going to just remind you, just answer the question that yes, the attorney asked you. Thank you. In 2014, based solely off your recollection, without having looked at any documents, can you tell us about how much time was devoted by InfoWars to covering San Diego? I believe it's five, six hours. In the whole year? Yes. Moving into 2015. At the end, or at the middle of 2015, in July 2015, you stopped, InfoWars stopped covering San Diego. Yes. Why did you stop? Because Halbig was saying that I was involved in Sandy Hook because I wouldn't have him on, and I started finding out that some of the things that the anomalies they had put forward weren't true. And I had just ended my divorce and just kind of um, was got my head cleaned up and uh, stopped drinking for a while and realized that it probably did happen and I was probably, you know, I mean, it was a good chance I was wrong. So I started basically trying to walk it back long before I got sued because I, I wasn't sure that I was right anymore. Not everything's a false flag, not everything is staged. During that time, there was a reporter working, or there's a gentleman who at least uh, we've had in evidence worked at some point for InfoWars named Dan Vadandi. Are you familiar with that name? Yes. Can you tell us who he is? He was a part-time reporter. Um, he was a really nice guy, but we were, we were, we were being more comedy-based part of the show then. 
And so Rob's like, this guy's like a Howard Stern character. And so we hired him to do some funny stuff, but he wanted to do serious stuff. And then he was officially working for us, then I let him go. Uh, when he came, we moved to Austin for about six months and just it didn't work out. And then he went back and he was doing his own show, but sometimes he would go out and you know, say he was doing stuff with InfoWars and we were proud of some of it, not so proud of other parts of it. And he, um, I Can mean, you he's... tell us specifically what you're not proud of regarding Badandi? I mean, I didn't like once I saw, because I wasn't uh, at the time watching a lot of the shows. Obviously, I was doing my own show. Uh, I, I saw some of the reports he put out, both on his platform and, and on ours. And I, and I remember saying, well, that's, that's, that's not how we want to handle things. We said, do that. Tell them don't do that. And then I, I began telling the crew, no more Sandy Hook. Um, just don't, don't, don't cover it. In that first half of 2015, um, do you before you shut it down, do you recall approximately, based off your memory, how much coverage Sandy Hook got? I don't think it was much. I, I don't. I don't remember. I don't. Much, it's, I wrote it down, but I mean, I know that for 16 months after that, we didn't talk about it any. 16 months. That's what my memory is. Yes. Let's talk about 2016. Was that an election year? Yes. How did the election affect Infowars? Before we'd been seen by the right wing as leftist and by the left wing as kind of crazy libertarians but I was popular with populists everywhere so I was popular with you know land rights groups and uh, anti-police corruption groups and it was really well known for being anti-police brutality at that time and anti-war and as soon as I got involved thinking that Trump was an outsider I got what politics is really like and I got thrown in the deep end of the weaponization of politics and experience what that was like at a very, very personal level. And how did the um, Clinton campaign weaponize InfoWars Sandy Hook coverage? Well, they looked at. The media went with, okay, this guy's bombastic, he's colorful, he said a lot of wild stuff. We're going to use that and say he's Trump's brain. And all these shows said, Alex Jones tells Trump what to do. And people believed him. Okay. Can't tell us what anyone else has said. Okay. There are a few exceptions that I do not think will come up in your testimony. So if somebody else said it, you can't tell us. Okay. Based on your um, participation in the campaign, just being in the country at the time, can you tell us the volume from your perspective of campaign ads linking you to Sandy Hook? In the last two months of the campaign, I'd, I'd, I'd already been a big part of the Clinton campaign, tying me to Trump. And then they spent a huge ad buy for two months talking about me, playing edited clips of me. Uh, Jackson, he doesn't know what their ad buy was or how huge it was. This is just absolute speculation. Speculation. Thank know, you. It's, it's just sustained. Sustained. How did you feel about that? Well, when I read in the newspaper, there was a $28 million ad buy. I, I, don't say what you read so, in the newspaper. Just tell me how you felt. Things that you have read are also hearsay. Okay. Because you didn't say them. Somebody else said okay. them. Right? A writing is speech. Do not tell the jury anything that came from someone else okay. that you've read or heard. You have to disregard that sentence. Okay. Go ahead. How did you feel about the advertising that was happening, the political advertising that was happening regarding you and Sandy Hook? I felt it was highly deceptive. I felt it stole my identity and was building me into a monster as a political tool. 
and I wanted my identity back and did not want to be tied to the twisted things that they were saying I did by making me the Sandy Hook man and I wanted to be able to, to try to set the record straight uh, because it wasn't just hurting me, it was, it was hurting my family and I also realized that it was going to get other people or possibly to, to make it a big issue and it did, it made it bigger, it made it a thousand times bigger than it ever was when other people covered it and it was just huge. And I had people on the street, sh shopping malls, grocery stores, saying stop talking about uh, Sandy Hook. Objection here said objection on response. Sustained. The, you made a video in November of that year, do you recall that? Yes. Called Final Statement on Sandy Hook. Yes. What was your purpose in making that? To tell the media why I questioned things, but that I thought that it probably did happen and that I did not want to talk about it anymore. So that was basically where I stood because I was getting a lot of calls from the media saying they wanted to interview me. And I was saying I don't want to talk about Sandy Hook. As you sit here today, do you realize what a mistake it was to allow yourself to be baited into making that video? I feel I was completely baited not just that time, but many other times after, and just caught in this, caught in this situation where I've been basically typecast as someone that runs around talking about Sandy Hook, who made money off Sandy Hook, who was, was obsessed with Sandy Hook when it, it was less than one ten percent over those six years of what we covered. And so it was just extremely frustrating. It was frustrating then. It's infinitely more now. In 2016, how much coverage did you give to the Sandy Hook? I believe almost none. That video? I think in my notes it's like 20 minutes or something. I'm not sure. Let's go into 2017. And I want to ask you some questions about Megan Kelly. Did you know Megyn Kelly before 2017? No. How did she approach you? She kept calling my cell phone. And at some point, um, without telling us what she said, did you agree to the interview? Yes. About how many phone calls did it take before you agreed? I don't remember. A lot. Why did you agree to the interview? Because I was told that I would be allowed to say that I thought Sandy Hook happened and apologize to the families. And did that turn out to be the case? No. Tell us about the process of filming the profile. How did that go? She came to the office at about 9 a.m. and we were done at about 10 o'clock at night. And then I was like three minutes of the program all edited together with jump cuts. What's a jump cut? It's like with the refrigerator magnet game where you can move the words around however you want. And when you know you got jump cuts because the shots keep changing. And we're talking every four or five words being jump cut so that it would make it appear that I wasn't sorry or that I wasn't sad about it and that I was uh, continuing to do it. Do you recall around when the, did the filming occur before or after April of 2017? I believe it was in April. When you realized what was going on, did you um, make a video um, addressing the media and what had uh, happened? I, I, I made several. I actually um, released the audio of Megyn Kelly. I recorded her once saying, we're going to let you set the record straight and you know, say that you think uh, Sandy Hook happened and all the rest of it. And then I also shot a Father's Day video to the families saying, I'd like to have you on the show and I'm sorry for what happened. 
uh, and uh, I believe that uh, you know these mass shootings happen, and that was my attempt because the media was saying on Father's Day he will attack the families coming up in BC. Just promos everywhere on all the major news channels. How dare he attack them on Father's Day? And then I. I, I haven't seen the report yet. Again, he's hearsay hearsay. Testimony to other networks. Sustain, hearsay, sustain. I so just, remember, Mr. Jones, if if, it, if you heard it, it's hearsay. Yes, that's why they're there. If you heard it, it's hearsay. So TV, that's hearsay. There are some exceptions, but I don't think any of your testimony is going to qualify for an exception. At this point, we will play Plaintiff's Exhibit 21, which is in evidence. All right. to restrict your speech. 
It's because Megan is playing along with it. She's in with the Sandy Hook groups. She speaks at their events. This is all a big PR event. Having them protest her then gives it more hype and then puts it out there like I'm the ultimate demon on the earth. Imagine this. A week and a half ago, she interviews Putin, supposedly the you know, evil, mass murdering criminal, they claim. But it's okay for her to talk to Putin. Only Alex Jones is so bad. Only Alex Jones is so evil that we can't see his interview. And on top of that, we can't hear what he actually has to say. So the reason I'm saying, sure, don't air the interview is because it's going to be edited to misrepresent what I said. In the promo piece, she makes it sound like I'm saying Sandy Hook didn't happen. When I explained to her both sides of it, and I explained that I only had debates and looked at the full story, it's incredible. And so I'm tired of being misrepresented. And despite the fact I came out yesterday and said, pull the interview, almost no coverage of that, even though it's sensational. Well, this is the top story in the country to have the person being interviewed to say, yes, go ahead and pull it, and almost no coverage. That's because they want the straw man the edited straw man of Alex Jones, the doppelganger, the imposter, they want to use that and hold that up and then misrepresent what I've said or what I've done. I'm talking about the 28 pages and our government uh, ordering a stand down for Saudi Arabia that's now been declassified And the 28 pages. They say that I say the firefighters blew up the World Trade Center. Firefighters were heroes, so were the police. They were some of our witnesses to the bombs that were in the buildings. Again, that's how they misrepresent. I point out that in the Iraq war, they staged events and uh, lied us into that conflict, claiming that babies were being thrown out of incubators, that babies were being killed, and all the rest of this garbage. And that we can't just sit here and trust an MSM that has shown itself to be such incredible liars. Why is this happening? This is happening because dinosaur media, the term I coined, is in crisis, is falling apart. The dwindling water holes they have of corporate money are evaporating, and new media that questions their lies in real time is popping up everywhere. Just today on Infowars.com, there are tons of links to mainstream media being caught interviewing actors, interviewing political consultants, and claiming that they were just people on the street. There's new articles coming out with a little boy that was bombed uh, in Syria, supposedly by the Russians, and his family coming out and saying it was actually ISIS that bombed them. I mean, everything they say is being reversed. Everything they promote is being disproven. So what do they do when they're the fake media? They go and they pick somebody who's prominent like myself, who supports Americana, who supports the restoration of our republic, who supports President Trump, to try to destroy his base. They try to destroy me. And they try to also intimidate all of you. That if you ever question official narratives, you will be destroyed. But I want to be clear before I go to these articles. Megan Kelly told me I'm not going to get into Sandy Hook or any of this other stuff. You know, I might just mention it and just let you clarify. And then she interrogated me, asked me five or six times on each subject, never stopped, and then edited the promo piece together deceptively. And that's why I'm saying don't air it, because I don't want to be used in another deception to drive wedges in this country. And again, undoubtedly, for years, this whole Sandy Hook PR deal with Bloomberg and Big Money and MSM, not the families, but Big Money and MSM, clearly is synthetic, is fake, and is pushing this like it's war propaganda or something against myself and the independent media, just hammering and hammering and hammering and hammering where I stand and what I believe. It is the fact that MSM is so untrusted that the public didn't buy Sandy Hook, and there were anomalies. And we'll go over some of those. And we are allowed to ask questions, and we're allowed to investigate, because that's what a free society is based on. And governments are famous for staging things, or using real crises, but then exacerbating them. And everybody knows that. So again, all they're doing is building us up. We're getting more traffic, more viewers, more supporters. Uh, we're selling more products. We're getting more sponsors knocking down our doors, which shows how pathetic MSM is. 
but also shows the fact that they are targeting people who are on the fence and don't know if MSM is telling the truth or not. They're trying to bully and intimidate anybody that asks questions. So let's look at these stories here. A new Ben Garrison cartoon based, of course, on my original term, uh, Dinosaur Media. You've got ISIS working with MSM, CNN. You've got NBC. They're down here in the water hole getting their money. And here comes Stefan Molyneux. Here comes Paul Watson. Uh, here comes uh, Cernovich. You know, here comes the Info Wars. Here comes Drudge. Here comes Breitbart. And just like the meteors, just like the asteroid, just like the comet coming down and killing the dinosaurs, that's exactly what's happening here. And then continuing, this is a new story on InfoWars.com by Paul Joseph Watson. Fake news, MSNBC pretends Obama campaign director is random woman on the street. That's how dumb they think you are. There's a bunch of examples where they also have actors in staged events just lately below it. Remember this, when they, uh, you know, on, on election night had their own camera people being interviewed and claiming that they were just citizens. This is why people don't trust them. This is why people don't believe them. This is an excellent article from Zero Hedge. But Alex Jones implores NBC not to air interview with liar Megyn Kelly. This article, better than anyone I've seen, I'm going to post on Infowars.com, breaks out exactly how I feel. What's actually happened is from iBankCoin.com originally. Uh, it's from Zero Point Now is who posted it. This, this article, I, I need to get this person to write for InfoWars. They absolutely get where I stand. They're journalists. They actually reported on what I said. They showed my quotes going back over years, saying, I don't know what happened, but it's got more holes out of the Swiss cheese. And, you know, uh, I believe kids die, but it needs to be investigated. And there's definitely a cover-up of the particulars. They really get it together here. Very, very important article. And they also understand it's big news. Well, this is a top story. And I'm saying, hey, I want the interview pulled, but nobody will cover it. USA Today and a few others. Now let's continue right here with this. Uh, again, the computer's locking up, and it'll shut down here in just a minute. Uh, the point is, ladies and gentlemen, the globalists are absolutely panicking right now. And when we come back from break here in a few minutes, I will get into some more of the history and some more of these articles uh, and go over documented cases where our government claims kids are being killed when children aren't being killed. Uh, not just the babies in incubators having their brains stomped out in Kuwait by Saddam Hussein's forces, a PR firm totally fake, fake video, fake photos, but, but so many other modern cases of ISIS rebels hitting people with uh, nerve gas and then blaming it again on the Russians. And the UN even found that that was a staged event. So if you have these staged events over and over and over again, it's okay to question them. But the bigger question is, why are they attacking InfoWars? Why are they so desperate? Why are they coming after us? Because they're scared of the fact that we're the leading independent media, that we understand the paradigm, and that the operating system of the American reboot of restoring our republic was basically re-engineered by InfoWars and is now being adopted across the board. We are writing the talking points now for conservative talk radio, for the libertarian movement, and for so many others. We take the hit, we get demonized, we get attacked, but we don't care because we popularize it and make it safe for others, just like Trump is smashing political correctness. We'll be right back after this break with more, and then Owen Schroyer's coming up. I'm taking off a little bit this morning to take my daughter to the dentist. Stay with us. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are back live. MSM, the dinosaur media, is absolutely panicking. They do not know what to do. And so now they are attempting to say that I'm even more evil than their top demon, Putin, and that I cannot be seen on NBC that will legitimize me. Uh, no, actually, that will upset our listeners and folks that absolutely hate MSM. The only reason I would go on it would be able to reach out to people that are still in the Matrix and also experience the deception of Megyn Kelly for myself, which I did. Megyn Kelly needs the alternative media. They need us, not the other way around. She needed this publicity. And from my research, I think the whole thing is basically staged. She works with the Sandy Hook groups. Uh, and this whole protest thing is about giving her massive attention so that the interview gets record ratings for failed Megyn Kelly. Megyn Kelly dropped as host for Sandy Hook Group's gala over Alex Jones' interview. See, she's deep in bed with this. And Bloomberg admits he's used the Sandy Hook groups uh, as a red shirt to wave around and demonize the Second Amendment, and then blame all gun owners for the deaths. Again, talk about a frame-up. Talk about criminal and disgusting and using these poor grieving families.
Jones. Alex Jones doubles down on Sandy Hook conspiracy theory and disgusting Megyn Kelly interview. It is the way she edited the promo. Not what I said. I said I believe that people die. So again, ladies and gentlemen, this is the type of garbage that we're dealing with. Look, I know I'm moving fast here. It's because there's so much evidence. Remember the British ambassador coming out and saying that clearly the false flag uh, chemical attack a few months ago uh, in Syria was carried out by the rebels as an attempt to get the U.S. to come into the war? I mean, think about how our government funded the Arab Spring that's killed almost a million people and put radical jihadists in power. And Hillary makes jokes about, I came, I saw, he died. Think about Madeleine Albright, who was Secretary of State under the Clintons, saying, yeah, half a million kids is no big deal dying in Iraq for our war with the sanctions that Clinton expanded. Again, these are cold-blooded monsters. And then they turn around and say, we question events that clearly have big PR firms involved, that we somehow are monsters and evil. It isn't going to work. Nothing can put mainstream media back together again. Everybody knows about the baby in the incubators. Everybody knows about other staged events. Everybody knows about CNN caught staging fake calls at, at town halls, and CNN caught you know giving the questions to Hillary from the debate beforehand, and the WikiLeaks, and, and how they're all colluding in the fake polls. You guys are the globalists. You're the enemies. You're the people that have hijacked America. You're the threat to our children. You're the people that are cold and heartless and don't care. Not us. But again, I want to encourage people to read the Zero Hedge article that breaks it all down because they absolutely uh, are on target with this report where they ask the uh, questions that the media seems so scared that I might even actually talk about uh, in the Megyn Kelly interview aired. Why did the San Diego Elementary School website have zero traffic for four years before the event and show was closed? Why were there several reports of other shooters dressed in camouflage in the woods that fled, of whom the police allegedly detained? Why were uh, porta potties, sandwiches, and fruit drinks and chips brought up and set up for the crime scene uh, in just a few hour or so. Sandy Hook, yeah, it just goes on and on. An FBI crime stat which shows no murders occurred in Newtown in 2012. Why didn't they let paramedics and EMTs in the building? 27 children were declared dead in eight minutes. Why was Adam Lanz's home burned to the ground by the bank? Why have they declared all the records totally secret? These are questions the public has. They're the ones asking it. They're the ones demanding it. I've said I believe children did die there, but PR firms are involved in admittedly hyping it up as much as possible, but there's been a cover-up, and Anderson Cooper got caught faking uh, where his location was with blue screen. I mean, it's all there. We don't know what happened. I believe kids died. But the same media that's faking a bunch of other stuff and faking war propaganda is saying that I have said things that I never said that have been taken out of context and now won't report when I'm saying don't air the interview on Father's Day to hurt fathers and demonize men and that you edited me out of context and that I don't want to air it. Why won't they actually report on what I'm saying? I'm Alex Jones. This is the Info War. Coming up, Owen Schroyer in the studio for the next 30 minutes. Then I'll be back in the studio coming up live. Please spread the word because the truth lives at InfoWars.com. At the time you filmed that um, segment, uh, had you ever heard the name Neil Heslin? I don't believe so. In addition to filming this clip, going after the mainstream media for the way they were covering the event, did you also film a a piece reaching out to the families? Yes, are you talking about the Father's Day message? Yes. And why did you film that? Because I wanted the families to know that I believe their children died and I was being used as a pawn like putting two pit bulls in a cage to have us attack each other <coughs> and I wanted I wanted it to stop <coughs> and I didn't want to cause them any more pain and it was also causing my family a lot of problems and so I wanted it to stop and I didn't want to be sucked into it anymore that's why I agreed to the Megyn Kelly interview she said I'll just talk about it a little bit and I said well I'd like to 
I'd like to be able to you know, clarify that I think it happened, but she didn't let that get out on air. <coughs> so, I'm sorry. Sorry about this. So, that's, that's why I shot the Father's Day report. This time we play Exhibit 67 on evidence for Father Day. All right. I woke up this morning on Father's Day and I was holding my young infant daughter in my arms, looking into her eyes, sitting out on the back porch, hearing the birds sing, and it just brought tears to my eyes thinking about all the parents that have lost their children on Father's Day or Mother's Day who have to then think about that. Parents should never have to bury their own children. And that's why on Father's Day I want to reach out to the parents of the slain children at the horrible tragedy in Newtown, Connecticut and give you my sincere condolences. I'd also like to reach out to any of the parents who lost a child in Newtown uh, to invite them to contact me to open a dialogue because I think it's really essential we do that uh, instead of letting the MSM misrepresent things and really uh, try to drive this nation uh, apart right now is a time for unity and peace in our country I think now more than ever After the Megyn Kelly profile aired, Owen Schroyer um, on InfoWars as an employee of Free Speech Systems reported on a zero hedge story about Sandy Hook. Do you recall that? Yes. Did you know he was going to cover it? No. To your knowledge, before that piece aired, had anyone on InfoWars ever mentioned Neil Heslin by name? No. Why haven't you fired Owen Troyer for airing that segment? Because I asked him why he did it, and he's testified that he wasn't denying his son died. He was saying, why did Megyn Kelly put two conflicting things out, obviously knowing, journalistically, that would stir up a larger debate. And also, go ahead. You know, though, that the, the gist of that report, as found by the court, was, as found by the court, defamatory to Mr. Hassan. Well, it was... Uh, not my intention. I didn't know that. And Owen, it's his opinion that he didn't mean to be that way. Um, and, and also, Owen came to work after I put out the directive to not cover Sandy Hook anymore. And it was an oversight uh, that while they're just printing out hundreds of articles and bringing in newspapers for the host to look at, you're not told cover this. They, they just bring in news articles and, 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 and stacks of things. He saw that, thought it was interesting, and, and covered it. And I don't think he intentionally in my view, uh, I understand the judge has said that, that, that that's the case, but um, I know that's not the case with me. And uh, Owen's a really classy guy and really is sad about what happened. So he would never, uh, in, in my view, want to do anything to just randomly hurt people. I, I didn't even know who Mr. Heslin was, never said his name. He's a really nice person now that I know him. His uh, ex-wife's an amazing person, very, very touching what she's doing. I really support, I'd like to work with your network. Uh, I agree we've got to uh, choose love and fix this, this evil that's ripping our country apart. And I'm just very blessed to be able to be here and actually say what I think and what I stand for instead of, instead of a bunch of edited, out of context takes. But I do acknowledge that I unintentionally took part in things uh, that did hurt these people's feelings and I'm, and I'm sorry for that.
to your knowledge, did you make money off of your Sandy Hook coverage? No, we lost money. It, it really hurt us with a large part of the audience. And Paul Watson basically ended up quitting over it. Um, and you were saying you cannot get sucked in by Pachinik and by all this. This is not you know, this is not good. And uh, and around the time that happened, I guess 2015 or so, I, I listened to him, but it was just like a cold sore resurface occasionally. This is a talk show, and so I mean, look now any mass shooting. Like I said, I almost didn't air the tape of the head of the state police saying there's a cover-up in Uvalde. I'm sure children die is terrible, but I'm like hands-off now because I don't want to be sucked into this black hole of mass shootings anymore. Let me, um, we've had some testimony about uh, 2018 uh, deplatforming of your business. What has that meant in terms of your audience reach what it does is you, you're technically still on the internet kind of like if you're in a prison you're still on the earth you just people have to come visit you in the prison they have to come to infowars.com you can't get it anywhere else other than edited things your enemies put out so you're not just locked in a prison it'd be like being locked in your house you're still in Austin but you can't go to the store you can't go Hundreds of platforms have barred us being there, and even things like Airbnbs and uh, Uber, it's, 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 uh, it's the social credit scores being tested on us that China has, and they admit that. And so it's, it, it's, it's, it's been horrible, and it uh, you know, has crippled the number of people we're able to reach, and, and the, again, the worst part is people in the establishment and the corporate media then can misrepresent what you said on Twitter or Facebook, or and you can't respond. That's why big newspapers have gotten rid of comments. They don't even want people to respond when they gaslight people. They can just say whatever they want about you and cobble things together, and then you can't respond. They edit the tape, they air it, and then you can't go show them the tape of what really happened and they make sure that's their key is that you can't ever respond and then they steal your identity basically then they build this demon out of bad things you did and good things you did but the point is they magnify your faults they blow it up and then now they own you they can say what they want about you they can do what they want they can falsely quote you and they can basically do it with impunity and it's next level 1984. So that's been the worst part about debanking, deplatforming, and all the persecution and all the things that have come with it is that you don't have a voice anymore in the utility that is the internet. Because the, the, these companies have utility protections. They're not publishers. That's how they're protected. And so they have immunity, basically, and then can say whatever they want. Everybody else can attack you on those platforms, but then you can't respond and defend yourself. So it's, it's, it's identity theft is what it is. Let me switch gears. And we've, we've touched on this already. As you sit here today, what are your beliefs, around the Sandy Hook school shooting? Well, I've certainly studied it now, and I should have done a better job studying it. There was an initial cover-up of what happened, in my view, because the local government was covering its hind like they've done in Uvalde. Those children really died, and they, they had a cover-up there. It's admitted. There's now state investigations of the cover-up. The Texas Rangers are on it. And the governor said it's an outrageous cover-up, uh, and it's incompetence is what it was. And I thought it was incompetent what happened in Florida a few years ago, 
objection, Your Honor. And, and, well, I mean. Sustained. What's the question? Sorry. My question was, as you sit here today, what is your your position, your view on what happened, the murders at Sandy Hook Elementary School in 2012? A young man on psychotropic drugs and the inserts on those say can make you do mass shootings, mass murders, as he says it on the insert. I think we're coming really close to contempt here. Uh, we object again for a second. Okay. Sustain. I'll move on. You're, you're asking what I, I think Sandy Hook happened. And I think it's a terrible event, and I think we need to protect our children from mentally ill psychopaths. And, we, and, and I think there was a cover-up because they had warnings. The FBI knew about it. They knew he was planning to attack the school. That's been in the, even the, the New York Times. And I think Your Honor, once that... Going to object again I don't understand. Well, right now there's actually no question. You're just okay. talking. All right. And this is not a conversation, okay. and it's not a show. It's a question. Answer to the question asked of you. Got it. Yes. So that objection is sustained, and we need another question. I'm wrapping up here. And I want you to tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what it is that you're trying to accomplish with Infowars. I'm trying to challenge the military industrial complex. I'm trying to challenge the powerful international forces that. I believe in taking control of our country, and I want to try to get people to ask questions and to not believe the official story and to try to investigate things for themselves. And, and I'm trying to promote American values of the First Amendment and of the people's right uh, to think and to make decisions on their own, and for the public's right to be able to listen to what they want to listen to and watch what they want to watch and read what they want to read and that's really what in my view this is all about is the worst speech out there is even if you disagree with it, even if it's the KKK and you know, horrible people like Nazis, I want to protect their right because if we take their right of speech away we're going to end up all losing our rights. It's, it is more than a slippery slope and I regret that I, by my mistakes, when you look back on your 20 plus years in the media, what are you most uh, proud of? I'm most proud of early on exposing that the WMDs weren't in Iraq and that it was a fraud and it was a lie. And I'm uh, very, very proud of being the first to expose Jeffrey Epstein and his child trafficking rings. We're on record being the first to expose that a decade before anybody else by name. And even exposing the island and the rest of it from our sources. And I am proud of the fact that we have inspired a lot of great people and in independent journalists that are doing great work. We've inspired a lot more good people than we have bad people. And, you know, I'm actually proud of the fact that I got a chance to have uh, Neil and Scarlett come over to me and, and, and shake my hand and you know talk to me uh, yesterday so I could tell them face to face that I'm sorry. Pass the word. See, I got a lot to talk to you about. Before I do that, though, before I talk to you about the details of the history of this case, I want to know: you taking this trial seriously? You approaching it in good faith? Absolutely. Okay. The truth is, you and your company want the world to believe 
that this judge is rigging this court proceeding to make sure that a script, a literal script, is being followed. That's what you want the world to believe, right? Aren't I barred from talking about this? I'm asking you a question, Mr. Jones. Answer the way the court works is you answer a question until there's an objection. Let me okay, ask you a um, question again, Mr. Jones. Make sure you understand it very clearly. You and your company want the world to believe that this judge is rigging this court proceeding so that a script, and I mean a literal script, is being followed. That's what you want the world to believe. That's what InfoWars wants. I believe when you're given a court order that you cannot say you're innocent, that that's not America, and the court order's right there on the table. I've been told I can't say I'm innocent. So you need to answer the question that is asked. So I asked you this question. Yes or no, that's what you want the world to believe. No, I believe the jury's real, okay. and, and I believe that I, and I believe that I'm innocent until proven guilty, and I believe a jury should decide my guilt. And Your Honor, at this time, we'd like to offer a clip from Infowars on Friday for the purposes of impeachment, in which those exact words are said. Right. Do you have an objection? I haven't seen the clip, Your Honor. Do you want to see it before we play it? I would. All right. Um, how long is it? Uh, that one in particular, I think it's about 15 seconds. Can you, is there some way to watch it without making the whole jury leave? <laughs> I guess you can maybe go outside the courtroom and this room. Do you have the ability to do that? Is this uh, do you have the ability for me to show it to outside the courtroom? Do you think that's not going to pose a problem in the room right now? Need the context. Okay. Yeah, it'll take her a minute to unplug and plug back in. All right. Well, why don't we do this? Um, why don't we go ahead and let the jury take a morning break? So 20 minutes or less, maybe 15 minutes. And we'll make sure we get through as much um, that has to be done outside of the jury as possible before you come back. So go ahead and take a break. Remember my instructions. All rise. <laughs> So you want me to bring the jury in and out, in and out every time? Well, if Mr. Bankston wants to keep playing little video clips that he got off the internet a week ago, yes. For impeachment purposes. I understand, Your Honor. He's got eight years, a decade of videos to play. Um, it seems unnecessary. Uh, and if that's the process, that's the process. My, my only other request then, if we want to do it in a way in which Mr. Reynolds is allowed to see all of my impeachment evidence while Mr. Jones now is standing, is to sequester Mr. Reynolds and Mr. Jones in any break in the testimony. I, I don't think that that's appropriate either. I mean, I'm not going to discuss anything with Mr. Jones that I'm not supposed to. Um, well, let's watch the one we've already talked about. Okay. So let's watch that one. Can you, um, the door is shut. Can we shut the door, um, Deputy, please, all the way? Yeah, thank you. Yes, 33. Yeah, What's that? No. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Oh, I guess. I'm not. I'm not sure that that's necessary. Okay, fine. Is that all right with you, Mr. Reno? It's fine with me. Okay. I'm not telling you to leave. You said you needed to use the restroom. Oh. Yeah, do you have a pair of earphones? Well, she wants to see it. That's what I'm seeing your future. Okay, sure. We'll just do this one this way. Uh, you want to do PBX 33 for me? Yes. He was hosting your show on the 29th? 
Yes. Well, you were on the show for part of the 29th, right? You were in the courtroom part of it, on your show part of it. I believe so. Okay. Um, and Mr. Barnes, he's a frequent anchor on InfoWars? He's been a frequent guest for about six years or so. He's also represented you in this case as an attorney? Yes. Okay. You say, Mr. Jones, that you're taking these court proceedings seriously. You're approaching them in good faith. But the truth of the matter is, you've been broadcasting repeatedly a picture of our judge on fire, haven't you? Objection compound, Your Honor. No. You have to wait until the court moves. Oh. Um, overruled. There was a statement and then a question. Mr. Jones, I'm going to hand you what I've marked as plaintiff's exhibit 129. That's from your show, isn't it? That's justice on fire. Huh, okay. That's from your show, isn't it? Yes, I haven't seen this. And you've been running this video repeatedly, haven't you? No, I have, I have not been there a lot of the time. You haven't been there a lot of the time. You've been there every day this last week, haven't you? Every single day. No, I taped some of the shows. You've not been there today. Your Honor, I'd like to move 130 to 129 into evidence. Um, is this impeachment evidence? Is this what's, I'm not exactly sure what Mr. Bankston wants to do with it. I think he wants to impeach Mr. Jones with it. Does he want to introduce it? Is it just to show to the jury, or does he want to no, go into evidence? I'm, I'm first he's moving to the evidence. evidence. He's moving. He's moving that it be accepted into evidence. Do you have an objection? Yes, Your Honor. What is the legal objection? 401, 403. Can I see it, please? Yes, yes, you may, Your Honor. Plaintiff's 129 is admitted. Thank you, Your Honor. Can you display 129? Do you have the ability? The person on the left of this image is our judge, correct? Yes. The person on the right is another judge you don't like, right? Yes. Okay. One of the things you can take that down. One of the things you've been talking about a lot recently on your show. Uh, even within the past couple of months, is your allegation that government officials are aiding in pedophilia, <laughs> child trafficking, and the grooming of children, right? You mean like what Jeffrey Epstein did with the Clintons? Sure, if that's a yes, is that a yes? Uh, yes. Okay. And on Thursday, you and InfoWars started connecting those allegations to our judge, didn't you? No. In fact, Mr. Jones, you're telling the world not to believe what happens in this courtroom because the judge worked with Child Protective Services, who you say is involved with pedophilia and child trafficking, correct? Not all of it, but it's the Texas Youth Commission got caught doing it a lot. There's been a lot of that here. I'm not asking you that, Mr. Jones. I'm asking you, you're telling the world not to believe what's happened in this trial because this judge is involved with CPS who is working with child traffickers and pedophilia, correct? No, that's not what I'm saying. Okay. Your Honor, at this time we would like to show a clip from Mr. Jones' show on Thursday where those words are said. For impeachment purposes. For impeachment purposes, yes, Your Honor. I'd like to hear the clip. All right. Do we have a system or just the... Okay. Yeah, it's not going to come up on And it won't show yet, yeah, right? Yeah, it doesn't show on screen.
would argue this is impeachment on a collateral matter, uh, not appropriate to get into improper impeachment. Anymore. Well, those are two different objections and a statement. So is it impeachment on a collateral matter or an improper impeachment? It is an improper impeachment because it is on a collateral matter. And the collateral matter is what he's saying about me? Correct. And the question is about whether he's taking this seriously. Correct. Overruled. This time, we shut up. He gives three, four. Maya Gamble comes from CPS, who has been exposed for human trafficking and working with pedophiles. That's what you mean when you say you're taking this seriously. I take this as serious as cancer. And, I mean, I don't know, you show somebody else's clip that they're always a few seconds long. Why don't you play the whole thing? Mr. Jones, that's not someone else's clip, is it? Well, I didn't direct it or produce it, what I'm saying. I mean, you certainly it, published it. I'm not, I'm not not. standing behind it. I have to see the full thing. So you don't stand by the things you publish about our judge on your show repeatedly? Day no, after no day. I said I don't not stand behind it. I need to see not just five-second clips. Well, we can talk about what you said before that. Can you play, how long's the clip? Can you play the whole clip? Mr. Jones, you're not asking questions today. You understand that, sir? Oh, I thought I could ask to see a full document. If somebody showed me something, I could see what it was. I this is a question from the lawyer, answer oh. from the witness. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not the other way around. The only thing I want to ask you about is not all the other weird stuff you said in that video. I just wanted to ask you about the question that I asked you, is which you said, no, I'm not saying the judge is connected to pedophile and child trafficking. This is you taking this trial seriously and in good faith? That's what this is? It, it's a five-second clip. I don't know what you've cut off or on. Hmm. Does it matter? Is there anything before and after that that would make it great to show pictures of our judge on fire and telling the world she's involved in pedophile. Can you tell me the context that would occur before or after that makes that I'm sorry. Great? Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> I believe you. If you're only wanting to go off five seconds, I believe the thing is, the judge is the fire burning Lady Liberty. It's not the judge. It, 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 you know, the judge is consuming freedom. Wouldn't you agree with me, Mr. Jones, that I sure hope some of your viewers are able to make that distinction that you just put on the air, don't you? Objective. All I know is, your Honor. Is, is, is that I take this very serious. Withdrawn, so stop. I'll tell your ju this jury you're taking this trial seriously, but you're telling the world that someone inside Travis County government rigged the jury summons and picked these jurors, specifically, who don't know what planet they are on. Correct? That's what you're telling the world. I'm saying that that, that, that that could potentially be a danger if they don't know what's going on. I think that's potentially, is what you're saying. Potentially. You didn't go on your show I mean, and say those words, is what you're going to tell me. I, can you show me? I would be happy to. For Please the purposes do. of impeachment, we would like to now offer a video from Mr. Jones' show on Friday saying those words.
we'd object to impeachment on a collateral matter in 403, Your Honor? Overruled. This time, let's go ahead and play that uh, video, PDX 35. Yeah, a lot of people are awake to the New World Order, but they're experts in leftist jurisdictions in sending out jury summons and hitting, let's just say this, extremely blue-collar folks. I mean, ha half that jury panel does not know who I am. They, they, they said that, and when they were asked during the jury uh, uh, in paneling yesterday, do you believe the media has ever got anything wrong about Alex Jones? They all unanimously said no. So, it's people do live in all these different bubbles. And there's the bubbles that are awake and the bubbles that are questioning, but then there's the blue city bubbles where people do not know what planet they are on. Mr. Jones, you don't like that this jury is made up of blue collar folk. You think that's wrong? No, I don't think that. You don't think they know what planet they're on? I'm saying some some people, like you said in your opening statements, that live in bubbles. We all live in bubbles, and if people live in a mainstream media bubble, they might not have ever seen what I really say or have done. That's what I was saying. I understand that you've been unable to attend a good portion of this trial due to a medical issue. Is that correct? Only a few, some of it, yes. Sure, sure. And and you told the press outside this courthouse that it was because of an untreated hernia. Well, I'm, I'm going to have to get that taken care of and Your a bunch Honor, of other stuff. It's absolutely inappropriate for Mr. Bankston to question Mr. Jones about his health issues. He wasn't under subpoena. He didn't have to be here. It's private information. What is right or wrong with his health? Okay, okay. Uh, Mr. Jones has the right to talk about his health with anyone he wants. We don't. Other people don't. Um, you can talk to him about attendance he's not required to be here it's his choice but let's not go into his let's not let's, let's move on i hear you your honor. I, there fine. wasn't a real legal objection it's kind of a okay you've been on your show most of last week pretty much every day last week i did an hour here i take some as well okay and you've been screaming and yelling on your show right Yes, just like the media's been doing that. Okay. <clears throat> Haven't been coughing on your show, have you? All these coughs in court, they, they, they don't happen on the full hour of your show. You don't ever cough, right? Uh, I mean, I've got cough drops right here in my pocket. I've got a, I've got laryngitis and a torn larynx. I mean, I, it comes and goes. It starts burning, and then it's uncontrollable. And I have actually been coughing a lot on air. If you guys have been watching my show, I we'll have a cough button I can step on and cough. There's a button I step on, and I've, I've been hacking and coughing. It's 100 percent real. Sure. You were talking about how you've done thousands of hours of programming, right? More than that over the years, yes. Not all of it's been about Sandy Hook, right? You talk about a lot of other stuff, right? Oh, in our estimation, over 99 plus percent has not been Sandy Hook. I want to talk about some of the other stuff. Boston bombing. You said it was fake. A DHS drill. Your Honor, we're going to object 403. No relevance to Sandy Hook. We can get into it some because it's been um, already introduced. Some. Well, I'm going to show the pattern here. It's like the Boston bomb. You've been telling the world, fake, not real. A Department of Homeland Security drill. Right? There was a drill. I think real people got uh, bombed. But we've, we've asked questions on both sides here. Yeah, so. you've said the exact opposite. You've, in fact, said that some of those people who were claimed to be injured were crisis actors in other tragedies. Just like in Sandy Hook, you said. No, we reported on other people saying that. In fact, you've said about some of the people at Sandy Hook. During your coverage of Sandy Hook, you have said they were actually some of the people pretending to be injured in the Boston bombing. You said that. I don't remember that. Okay. Shooting of Representative Gabrielle Giffords. You remember when that happened in Arizona? <clears throat> yes. Okay, and you said that was a government mind control operation, right? I, I said the guy fit the bill. Did you say he fit the bill, or did you tell your audience explicitly that, that was a government mind control operation? I, I, did you do? I, I didn't know you were bringing this up. That was a long time ago. What about the uh, Sutherland Springs church shooting just down the road from here? That wasn't that long ago. You said that that was fake, an Antifa false flat staged operation, right? 
I believe I, we said that happened. We, we questioned like Evaldi. Everybody's questioning that. About Oklahoma City, you said that's a false flag inside job. Absolutely. I've interviewed the police officers and others that were there, found the other bombs inside. Uh, they've been on my show. <coughs> you remember the shooting in Parkland, Florida in 2018? Yes. And you called a bunch of people crisis actors there. You said crisis actors were used in Parkland, Florida. Right? No, I didn't. I said they had the the film, uh, the, the drama club then go do interviews about it because they had s skills to, to present themselves. I said that I believed that that happened and I had students on the day after the show, uh, the shooting saying it happened and that there had been a police stand down and then CNN said I'd had actors on and, and it wasn't true, I had real people. You don't remember saying on the day of and the next day that it was a false flag engineered to start a civil war? Did you say that about Parkland? I, they they knew about the young deranged man who they, he was known as school shooter that was his nickname and he was kicked out of school for threats at the time and he was again left alone. Sustained. Mr. Jones, I asked you in that day and the day after, do you remember saying that Parkland was a false flag engineered to start a civil war? I said it could. I mean, I believe it, it, it could be. Okay, Las Vegas the shooting there at the concert. So that's a false flag, government operation, right? Well, I mean, a lot of people have questions about Vegas. I mean, that was... So Mr. Jones responses. is sustained. Mr. Jones, I know, I know you want to tell your, what you want to tell us, but this is a question and uh, answer. Yes. And so just like Mr. Raynal can ask you questions later and you'll get to answer them right now, Understand. you have to just listen to the question that Mr. Bankston asked you and just answer that question. Okay. All right, let's try again. Las Vegas shooting. You said it's a false flag, government operation. I'm going to object four or three again. I think we've done enough down this road, Your Honor. We'll finish with this one. Okay. I believe it should be investigated. Would you agree with me that there is not a mass tragedy, mass bombing, mass shooting that has occurred in America in the past 15 years that you have not attached the words false flag? I have asked the question because I believe a lot of things are provocateur or allowed to happen. Um, I believe children died in Uvalde and... Objection, non-responsive. Okay. Sustained. I, Mr. Jones, please listen to my question. It's a okay. very, very simple question. Okay. You would agree with me that every single mass tragedy, mass shooting, mass bombing that you can recall right now in the past 15 years, you have attached the words false flag to it. Yes or no? No. Okay. You remember yesterday you were testifying about what the word synthetic means over on that board? Yes. Okay, and you testified that when you use the term synthetic, that means real stuff happened, but that it was being provocateurized, with provocateurs, right? It can mean both, but yes, generally. Okay. Well, I'd like to, to show you right now from the plaintiff's exhibit 13A, I mean plaintiff's video exhibit, 13A in evidence, an example of you talking about something being synthetic. So can we play plaintiff's video exhibit 13A? To make, yeah, you know, when you're trying to, to, I mean, decipher cloak and dagger, dirty tricks, it, it's pretty hard to do. It's just that when you, then you learn that they were funded by Western funding, the, then you learn that it was the same Amaral Lockheed connection underwear bomber. Then those are big red flags that they were patchy provocateurs. The classic MO has been followed. And then, yeah, it kind of becomes a red herring, you know, to say the whole thing was staged. Because they have staged events before, but then you learn the school had been closed and reopened, and you got video of the kids going in circles in and out of the building, and they don't call the rescue choppers for two hours, and then they tear the building down and seal it, and they, they get caught using blue screens, and uh, an a email by Bloomberg comes out in the lawsuit where he's telling his people, get ready in the next 24 hours to capitalize on a shooting. Uh, yeah, so Sandy Hook is a synthetic, completely fake, with actors, in my view, manufactured. I couldn't believe it at first. I knew they had actors there, clearly, but I thought they killed some real kids. And it just shows how bold they are that they clearly used actors. I mean, they even ended up using photos of kids killed in mass shootings here in a fake mass shooting in Turkey. 
So, yeah, uh, or, 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 or Pakistan. The sky is now the limit. I appreciate your call. Now, I think you'll agree with me, Mr. Jones, that when you were testifying yesterday about what the term synthetic means, you did not tell the jury it can mean both. You told them, would you agree with me, that it means something really happened. That's what you mean. That's what you said yesterday? No. No, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm saying that's totally synthetic. Back at the time for that one year, I was saying that it totally didn't happen in like 2014 or whatever it was. No, I mean that's that's not okay. After after the beginning, sustained. Okay. We'll move on. Let's talk about Jim Fetzer for a minute. All right, and then maybe you just testified that you figured out you figured out Jim Fetzer was a little nutty. You came to that conclusion, All right? Yes. Around 2015, what you testified to. I don't remember the exact age. No, you just got it. You seem to remember pretty well when Mr. Raynell was testifying that you apparently put a ban on Sandy Hook coverage in 2015, right? Objection, compound. I told him I can't remember. I had notes. I okay, okay. When you hear objection, that means you wait. Objection, compound. Yeah, we began with threats and we ended with. Sustained. One question sure. at a time, please, sure. Mr. Bankston. By 2015, you put, you're claiming you put a ban on Sandy Hook stuff, right? Just testified to that? I, I believe that's around the time I told people to stop covering it. And you knew Fetzer, Fetzer by that time. You figured out he was not well, right? Yes. And were you here for the testimony of your corporate representative, Brittany Paws? I don't know if you were here for that. Um, no, I wasn't. Okay. Were you aware, either from seeing her testimony at an earlier point or from hearing about it secondhand, were you aware that she testified that at the time the company was using Jim Fetzer's material, that they knew he was not a well man? Did you see that testimony? I didn't see that testimony. Okay, if Ms. Paz testified that, if your corporate representative got up here and testified when we were using Fetzer's stuff, we knew he was not credible, would you disagree with that? Is she telling the truth? I mean, I think she would have to be mistaken. We didn't have a corporate rep, so we went and hired someone to come look at all our books and everything and try to figure out what was going on. So, uh, but no, I, mean, I, I never interviewed Fetzer on that. None of us interviewed him on Sandy Hook. So, did we cover a news article that might have had a quote by him or something in it? Yeah, I saw that. But we, we weren't closely associated with him at that time, is my memory. Again, objection on this one. Um, with respect to Mr. Halbig, I believe you testified also just now. You figured out he was crazy in 2015, right? Sometime around then, yeah. Okay. And in fact, though, did you see Mrs. Paul's testimony where she said the company received emails from Wolfgang Halbig as early as 2014 that they thanked him for that they knew were crazy? Did you see that testimony? I did not see that testimony. Okay. And you understand that she talked to all your employees, right? Like she went and interviewed people and figured out what they thought about Mr. Halbig. You understand that happened? That's what we hired her to do. She talked to you too, right? Yes. And she went in there and testified under oath on behalf of the company that the company, in 2014, knew he was crazy and was thanking him for the things he was providing that were crazy, right? Well, that's not my understanding of it, so. Okay. Well, at least you, you here saying that you knew by 2015 he was crazy. So certainly, certainly we shouldn't see any things that Mr. Halbig said on your show after 2015, should we? I told you that the dates all were together. Sure, I understand. <coughs> so it could have been, heck, maybe just yesterday you realized that Mr. Halbig was going to be a huge liability for you, right? No, it was, a long, it was a long time ago. Okay. Let's talk about a little 2015. You said you stopped covering it. Sandy Hook in 2015. <coughs> At some point. Right, and I believe Mr. Raynaud put Exhibit 31 in front of you, right? You know the you, list of videos? Yes. One you made notes on? No, he, I wasn't allowed to have the, the, the list. Right, but you you made notes on that video, on that list? I, I, I watched it, and I, yeah, I made some notes so I could try to accurately answer the questions. Okay, and you testified from that, that stopping in July 2015, which is the last video we have on that list in 2015, that for the next 16 months you didn't cover Sandy Hook. That's what you said. I did not testify from it. I wasn't allowed to have it. No, I'm telling you right now. I'm just telling you the video. 
July 2015 is the last one we have on that list. And we know you reviewed that list to calculate how long you didn't cover San Diego. And you're going to tell me from July 2015 for the next 16 months you didn't cover San Diego. Not in the list we have. We tried to find everything. Okay. Can you uh, put up Exhibit 73 for me? <laughs> now, you understand I, I don't have all your videos about San Diego either. You understand that, right? Correct, Mr. Jones? If, if you say so. No, how about you say so? You understand that, right? We have located what we were able to find. We believe it's almost all of it. Now, you remember Rob Dew testifying as your corporate representative. God knows where all the videos are. You remember that? Well, that's deplatforming. Because. I have the objection on the sponsor. Do you remember what Rob was saying? Just answer the question. No, I don't. Mr. Jones. Thank you. See this email right here? You've seen it a few times in the fall suit, haven't you? Yes. This is Mr. Watson warning you, not in June 2015, not in March 2015, but he is warning you in December 2015 that this Sandy Hook stuff is killing us, correct? Yes. I think we can surmise pretty easily from this email that in July 2015 we did not put a ban on Sandy Hook. And in fact, there are videos that we don't have that Mr. Watson is talking about. Do you agree with me? I, I mean, I don't know that, and that's us trying to get him to not talk about it. Is that what that is? That's you trying to, I think that's Mr. Watson telling you, Mr. Jones, a warning, right? No, I went, I was telling people not to cover it too. Really? Who yes. were you telling not to? Adon Salazar, Rob Dew, because they were still convinced it didn't happen. Now I know you said that Mr. Schroyer came later, so maybe he didn't hear the instruction, right? Yes. Okay, we'll get to that. Let's talk a little more about 2015. You talked about Dan Bedondi, right? Yes. During that period. And you described him as a part-time reporter, right? If that, about by the end, yes. If that, maybe not even a part-time reporter, right? That's well, he was a full-time reporter for a while, and then he, we let him go, and he went back to Connecticut, or I think Rhode Island's where he lived, for, and then okay. he went out. And did so I, before we go any further, I just want to make sure now we have what the testimony is. Good. He was a part-time reporter, but now he's a full-time reporter? Which is it? No. He first came, he, he entered some contests and stuff, but wasn't a reporter then. He came down to Austin and was a full-time employee for like six months of memory serves. Then we let him go. And then he asked me to still just do some stuff on the side over the years and, and did some things. You see his testimony in the courtroom when it was played? Are you here for that? Uh, no. So I'm guessing you also, even unless you've heard it secondhand, you didn't see Mr. Badani testify that he was a producer for the Alex Jones show and spent six days a week with you. You didn't see that? Well, that's not true. Okay, Mr. Badani's lying. I think he's uh, mistaken. Okay. And the truth is, you didn't fire him until late 2016 when he embarrassed you at a Trump rally. You remember us talking about that? Me and you? I don't remember that. Okay. I want to talk a little bit about your final statement on San Diego, right? And you testified that the reason that you did that final statement in 2016 is so that you could tell the world that you thought it really happened, right? That was the beginning of me doing that. The beginning of you doing that. And I think, as we've seen in this case, that is the video in which you said, if children were killed at San Diego, my heart goes out to those parents. But the problem is, I've seen actors before, and I know when I'm watching a movie, and I know when I'm watching something real. Do you remember seeing you say that? In the yes, comments? I did say that. Okay. And that was your final statement, looking directly at camera, addressing the people who say their parents I see on TV. Right? That was your final statement. But it wasn't my final statement. It sure wasn't. But it certainly wasn't to go on the world and tell the world that it probably happened. In fact, it was the exact opposite, wasn't it, Mr. Jones? I believe I actually say I think it happened on the tape. The jury has that in evidence. Let's talk about 2017, the Megyn Kelly interview. You remember you talked about how that was filmed in April, right? 
in memory. I, I'm not allowed to have notes, but I think it, around then. I, I don't understand, Mr. Jones, that when you were asked questions on direct examination about when these events happened, and we're very quickly able to say it happened in April 2017, why when I asked the same question, you're very confused. Did I said, I think, I think that too then. I don't, don't remember exactly. I think so. All right. Well, in April 2017, the other thing you did right after that interview is film a video called Sandy Hook Vampires Exposed, didn't you? Yes. And in that video, you were saying a lot of things like, Sandy Hook wasn't even an operating school. You remember seeing that being played in this court? I believe so. Yeah, and that's something that Halbig told you, or that you were relying on Halbig for, right? I, I had seen articles and things about it then, as well. You had seen articles that Sandy Hook wasn't an operating school. Is that what you're testifying to under oath right now? I had seen people do articles about it. I don't remember the exact articles. Sure. All right, but what we can know is that in 2017, shortly before these people brought their suit, you were on Infowars saying Sandy Hook wasn't an operating school, right? Uh, if you say so, play the, play the video. I know I want you. You can testify to that. Do you even remember what was played in this courtroom? I've seen it. I've seen a lot. I'm, I think I did say that. I think you did too. You, would, you also remember you and Mr. Dew talking about how much you wanted to see the bodies? There's no bodies. They never showed us any bodies. I don't remember that, but I'll take your word for it. Okay. And you'll agree with me in that video, you were saying a bunch of the same stuff from Wolfgang Halbig that the company knew as far back from 2014 was crazy. You, you're going to admit to that now? Or are you going to deny that? I thought we were talking about Halbig in 2015. Thinking he was well, we're now in 2017. And we had actually, you said 2015. You remember I asked you about Mrs. Paul's testimony in 2014. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. So what I'm asking you now is that whether it's you in 2015 knowing it, or whether Ms. Paul says the company knew it in 2014, regardless of which one of those, that was years later in 2017. Infowars is still publishing the things from how big it knows are crazy. Do you I, 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 did, I hadn't read those emails, so I, I don't. Hold, hold on, Mr. Jones. Hold on. You testified. You, that in 2015, you knew how big was crazy. Because he started saying that I was covering up Sandy Hook. Correct. So now, in 2017, two years later, you're repeating all the things Halbig says, knowing he was crazy. And Halbig wasn't the only one saying that. The other Objection, four. Objection, non Let's talk about um, Plaintiff's Exhibit 21, which is the video that your attorney played, that 17-minute video that was on, I believe, the day before your Megyn Kelly video was going to air? Uh, yes, I think. You were, I think you would agree with me that you were trying to urge NBC not to air it, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, I noticed that you said in that video that the media never quotes what I said. Right? They always just try to paraphrase it. They don't actually use the real quotes. Right? In general, yes. Okay. But, but Zero Point Now, this anonymous blogger, he did quote what you said. And you said he did a good job. I want him to write for me. You remember hearing that in the video? Yes. Okay. And then you went through what Zero Point Now was quoting about what you said about Sandy Hook, right? Yes. Okay. And one of those things in 2017, was you saying that the Sandy Hook website had no internet traffic during the years when the shooting supposedly happened? That was right? my memory. Right. And that wasn't true. I meant the quotes where I said I think Sandy Hook happened. I like the fact that that was quoted. Mm -hmm. That was the whole point. Mr. Jones, in that video, you went down and read these questions about these false things about Sandy Hook. You did that in that video. Yes. And I noticed you skipped the one about Robbie Parker. You started to read it, and then you stopped reading it. Did you, you see where that happened? No. Okay. And the, the reason that you were a little hesitant, though, at that time, to mention a parent's name, is because you knew legal threats were on the horizon, didn't you? No. Okay. The things you uh, did say, though, that were quoted from you, that you wanted to repeat to your audience, because they had done such a good job of covering you, was also 
that the police were eating their food inside of the school in the crime scene. Right? You remember that? I don't remember. Right, you don't remember what we just watched 10 minutes ago? I missed that part. Okay. Do you remember them talking about the FBI crime stats saying no one killed in Sandy Hook that you read in that 2017? That was the headlines, yes. What headline? Your headline. That, that, that's what it said. No, it didn't, Mr. Jones. Do you admit that now? The FBI did not have a crime stat. I mean, I admit we later learned that in the full report, they don't report those in that state. But they do, I think, everywhere else. Mr. Jones, we've heard a lot of testimony about the FBI crime stat and how that got wrong. We heard that from Mr. Salazar. Were you in the courtroom for that? I think I was in there for part of it. Okay. So you probably heard Mr. Salazar how he messed that up, right? I mean, I think we admit we messed that up. Right, but you were still saying it in 2017. At a time where you want this jury to believe you were saying it really happened, you in 2017 were saying the FBI says nobody died. I said it on the video. I thought it happened like five times. Yeah, just like Megyn Kelly said in your interview, you want to have it always, don't you, Mr. Jones? No, I think Sandy Hook happened. Yeah, but if Sandy Hook happened, then that means there's not an FBI crime stat that nobody died. It means that there was website traffic. It means that nobody ate their food inside the school. All these things you're saying are false, right? I'd, I'd have to review all of it again. You, 10 minutes ago, we saw a video of you saying no EMTs entered the building. Do you remember that? You remember saying that? On I mean, I'd, I'd have to see the timelines of what you're speaking about. <coughs> I'm asking you if when we broke from your break, when your attorney put up the video, they really wanted this jury to see how fair you were being about Sandy Hook. You said no paramedics entered the building. <coughs> right? In, in, in a certain time frame. What do you mean by that? I'd have to see the, the, the time frame you're talking about. What do you mean time frame? You said they never entered the building. Never entered it? That's what you said. Well, and you said that for years. I, I, I think you're taking it out of context. Right, because they had to keep them out of the building, because otherwise you'd have to pay off all the EMTs, because they'd get in the building and they'd see there's no bodies. That's what you told your audience. You've told them that many times. <coughs> I don't remember what you're talking about. Sure. One of the things you talked about yesterday is you complied with discovery, right? <coughs> you said that on the witness stand? That's one of the things I talked about. Okay. One of the things that you were ordered to do in this lawsuit your order to turn over any text messages between Sandy Hook, right? Yes. And you didn't have any, right? Not that we could find. And and you in fact told me in in your testimony, sworn testimony before coming to this courtroom, you searched, right? I did. Okay. Do you remember? Were you here for Mr. Shorter's testimony? <coughs> yes. Okay. You remember what Owen said? The company has learned from its mistakes about Sandy. Hook. You remember that? Oh, I did hear him say that. You agree with that? Yeah, we certainly learned from our mistakes got a lot better. Okay. <coughs> Mr. Jones, I'd like to show you what's been marked as plain specific word third. You've got it upside down. That's text messages between you and Paul Watson, isn't it? Yes. And they mention Sandy Hook, don't they? Yes. Plaintiffs move 130 into evidence. Any objections? What's that? Show you where well. Plaintiffs 130 is admitted. Can you bring 130 for me? Let's zoom in on the little article up in the corner, please. I'm going to walk over to this to you so we can kind of point it. I know it's a little hard to read. You may be able to read it a little better on your screen. But this is a zoom of, of Mr. Watson has sent you a screenshot from Infowars.com, correct? <coughs> it appears to be. Yeah, and it has an article here, right? Yeah. And it says, staged, video shows hospital using dummies in ER for coronavirus footage. 
against us? I believe so. Let's go to the first message from Mr. Watson. Read along with me, Mr. Jones. He says, this is a video. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me, what's that? No problem. Take your time. <coughs> oh. You ready? Uh, yeah, this, you may not think it's a problem, but it's a real one. Sure. Just give me a second. <coughs> oh. All right, go ahead. Mr. Watson says, this is a video of a medical student training to intubate makes us look ridiculous, suggesting this means COVID is fake. Sandy Hook all over again. <coughs> I read that correctly? Yes. Go to the next message. <coughs> What'd you tell Mr. Watson? I get it. Mr. Jones, it's true that this article is right now live on Infowars.com. I can pull it up, right? I've never seen this text message. I guess you guys got Paul's. My phone didn't save them. So that's fine. Your they, phone didn't save the text message. I told you guys, I gave it to the, I, I gave it to the lawyers and said that they drained the phone, they didn't find that stuff. I don't know how my phone's... You gave it to the lawyers. They were supposed to find it. So that's what, that's what testimony is? No, I searched it as well. I mean, so I, I, you guys have all this stuff and you say we didn't give anything. It's Mr. Ridiculous. Jones, you know how an iPhone works, right? You've had like one text message for several years now. Yeah. What does it mean if the messages are in blue? Whose I, messages are those? Whose phone is this taken from? I don't know whose phone's taken from. I mean, I just, I turned the phone over and said, take stuff off. Can I have you look in the very bottom below the very bottom left corner? Is that your phone number? Yes. So you did get my text messages. And it said you didn't. Nice trick. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mr. Jones. Oh. Indeed. You didn't give this text message to me. You don't, you don't know where this came from. Do you know where I got this? No. Mr. Jones, did you know that 12 days ago, 12 days ago, your attorneys messed up and sent me an entire digital copy of your entire cell phone with every text message you've sent for the past two years, and when informed, did not take any steps to identify it as privileged or protect it in any way, and as of two days ago, it fell free and clear into my possession, and that is how I know you lied to me when you said you didn't have a text message about saying you Did you know that? I See, I told you the truth. This is your Perry Mason moment. I gave them my phone and then- Mr. Jones, you need to answer the question. No, did I, you know I, this happened? No, you know? I didn't know this happened, but I mean, I told you I gave them the phone over. Just, just and answer you said, the question. You said in your deposition, you searched your phone. You said you pulled down the text, did the search function for Sandy Hook. That's what you said, Mr. Jones, correct? And I had several several different phones with this number, but I did, yeah. Well, of course, I mean, that's why you got it. No, Mr. Jones, that's not why I have it. My lawyer sent it to you, but I'm hiding it. Okay. Mr. Jones? Mr. Jones, Please that? just answer questions. There's no question. Mr. Bankston also only asked questions. Sure. Mr. Jones, in discovery, you were asked, do you have Sandy Hook text messages on your phone? And you said no. Correct. You said that under oath, Mr. Jones, didn't you? I mean, if I was mistaken, I was mistaken, but you, you got the messages right there. You know what perjury is, right? I just want to make sure you know before we go any further. You know what it is. Yes, I do. I mean, I, I'm not a tech guy. I told you I gave, in my testimony, the phone to the lawyers before or whatever, and, and so you got my phone, but we didn't give it to you. No, Mr. Jones. One more time. And please remember, if you need to assert the Fifth Amendment, you can. I need to know that you can do that. But you testified under oath previously that you personally searched your phone for the phrase Sandy Hook and there were no messages. You said that under oath. Yes. And you lied when you said it. No, I did not lie. Emails. You testified yesterday you don't have it. You got rid of your email 10 years ago. InfoWars email. Oh, so now it's InfoWars. You do use email, though, don't you? Not, not, 
uh, it's like household stuff and things like that. But oh, so it's I don't personally send emails. Sure. My assistant does, and it's for like you know broken sprinklers or whatever. Okay. So you don't have emails about Sandy Hook. You don't have emails about this case. You got hundreds of thousands of our emails. None from you. And I didn't get hundreds of thousands of emails. Most of those, in fact, you would agree with me. Nearly every email you've produced to me outside of maybe a hundred are emails of Wolfgang Halbig and Jim Cuts. Because they sent you thousands of emails, right? I mean, I I quit opening email and using it before Sandy Hook. Okay. And so, you, uh, in other words, if somebody was to tell me, oh, I have emails from Mr. Jones that he wrote about this case in the past couple of years, that person would be lying? You're telling the truth? If somebody else has got my InfoWorks email because I haven't been using it all. In, in that's, that's not qualified, Mr. Jones. You know in this case you were asked to produce your emails, any emails you had about Sandy Hook. You know you were asked to do that. Right? Yeah. And you said you didn't have it. I, I told my IT people, go. you've got all that stuff. No, Mr. Jones. I'm saying in deposition, under oath, sworn to God, you said you don't have any emails for Sandy Hook because you don't use email, right? I mean, I I think I have, I mean, I haven't been using InfoWars email, and it's, it's got to be a decade or, or, or longer in my memory. I but don't. With InfoWars.com, you know. No, Mr. You notice when, when Mr. Watson emailed you, right? He didn't have an InfoWars email address, does he? He has like Paul Watson at sky.com. It's a UK email address. Did you notice yes. that? Right. We asked for all emails. And you told us you don't use email and there are no emails for Sandy Hook. That's what you said under oath, isn't it? There might be, I'm sure there might be like privileged emails where like lawyers are requesting documents or stuff about the case. Mr. Jones. Yeah. First, objection on this one. Sustained. Did you testify under oath that you do not use email and that there are no responsive emails relating to this case? Did you testify to that? Yes, I personally do not get on the internet and sit there and use email. I never send emails myself because I don't like it. I can't stand it. There's just too many of them. I'm not, that's, a, that's a fact that I don't use email. I call people on the Back. telephone. Your Honor, uh, excuse me, Mr. Jones, I'd like to show you this document. Is that your email address? Yes. Did you write an email? Is that an email, Mr. Jones? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Jones. So the well, I'm not reading it. It's just for What's this have to do with Sandy Hook? I'm not asking you a question other than that's an email you've sent. That's, let's start there. Can you do that? Can you say that's an email you sent? I must have dictated that to my assistant. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there are, you would agree with me, there are emails, hang on a little thing, I'm done with that. There are emails that you've sent to your lawyers, your staff, and others concerning your business operations that we requested for. Sandy Hook, other topics that have been requested in this lawsuit, like Zero Hedge, you'd agree those emails, they exist. Do you agree with that or not? Um, I've dictated emails to people, and you, you guys have gone and gotten other people to give you their emails. You've, but that is, that is my personal email that I use for personal stuff. It has nothing to do with Sandy Hook, unless lawyers have sent me emails there that my assistant prints off for me. You talked yesterday about prepackaged food. You remember that? You know what I'm talking about? No. You don't remember yesterday testifying about selling prepackaged food? Oh, yes. Okay. And you sell these, some of them come in tubs that you could, for instance, like store for a long time in case something horrible happens, right? Yes. Okay. And in fact, you talk about that's one of your big items. That's a big type, big deal type thing on Infowars. Sure. Okay. And you also talked about how it's, it's a tough business in a lot of ways because you only have about a 20% profit margin on the sale of food. So about 20 to 40, yes. Okay. So.
For instance, so for every hundred thousand dollars in sales of food, that means you're profiting twenty thousand dollars, maybe even up to forty thousand dollars. Yes. Okay. I'll show you another document, Mr. Johnson. This has been marked as Plaintiff's Exhibit 132. Do you see that? Yes. Those are text messages of Tim Fruget, the operations manager of InfoWars, right? Yes. And we requested information about your revenues in this case. You remember that? Yes. You didn't give us this, did you? There's a lot of stuff. I mean. Yeah, you didn't even look through your text messages, Mr. Judge. You hit them, right? Correct? No. Okay. I gave it to the lawyers. That's why you have it. That's not why. I mean, this is ridiculous. Plaintiff's Exhibit 132. Are you motioning to admit it? Yes. Can we, um, um, no, yes, I'm sorry. Can we move to admit Plaintiff's 132 at this time? Any objection? Plaintiff's 132 is admitted. Before we put that up, Mr. Jones, I just want to make sure you understand something about these emails. You understand that when your attorney sent me your whole phone, he didn't mean to do that. You understand? Objection, that? Your Honor. I just want to make sure this is not discovery. Well, I, I do think it's important that, since we're discussing all of this, that the jury understands discovery is a process that occurs and concludes well before trial. Um, what the lawyers say is an evidence, so we don't know whether it was on accident or on purpose because we don't we don't have evidence about that. But what we do know is that it wasn't properly turned over when it should have been. There's no question, Mr. Jones. Yeah. So you need to ask a question that does not cause for speculation. Um, and even if Mr. Jones does know, he would have gotten that information from Mr. Reynal, his attorney, and so it would be protected, most likely. Most likely. Um, Mr. Jones, you know what Bates numbers are, right? We've talked about the main. I believe that's these. No, that's you're talking about an exhibit sticker. Okay. Thing? Yeah. Remember, we've talked in deposition before that there are Bates numbers on the bottoms of documents that your company produces for this lawsuit. And they start with F-S-S-T-X. -S -S and then they have a long number after that. Okay. No base number on this, is it? But it was, give, I gave it to the lawyers, like I told you, to start this testimony. Mr. Jones, yeah. Mr. Jones, I know it's hard, but I know you can do it. All right. The question, there's no base number on this document. No, there's is not. There? Thank you. And please don't interrupt me or the lawyers. Let's um, display 132. Let's go to the last two messages. Can you pull those up? Mr. Fruge, Fruge, Fruge? How do I say his name, Mr. Jones? Fruget. All right, so Mr. Fruget, you would agree with me that pretty much every day he sends you an update on how much the store has sold, and sometimes he lets you know how much profit you made, right? Yes. Okay. And in this message, he says 110 gross sales in food equates to almost 70K pure profit. That's what he told you. That's what that says, and that's that's not what it does. So this, I, 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 I have a question about it. So. Okay. Can we go up to the? Yeah. Hey, Mr. Jones. Did you respond with a question? I don't know. I don't know. Let's um, let's pull up the big button. Yeah. That one. This shows some of the totals per day, right? right? Yes. Okay. And so this is something Mr. Fruge I would send you from time to time. Right? Yes. Okay. All right, you can take that down, Mr. Fruge. I think it's clear, would you agree with me, to everyone in this courtroom, that the statement that you only get 20% or 40% profit margin on food was not true. No, I can I can bring those numbers in here and show you that. 
well, I asked you for those numbers. I asked you for those numbers, and I didn't get them. And instead, now I have this text message that says something totally different. Do you think, in those circumstances, anyone should believe a word you say? I'm confused by that because uh, that's 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 not the margin, and I wish that was the margin. I'm going to show you what's in Mark Plain, it's 134. It's more messages, Mr. Fruget, isn't it? Yeah, these were our best sale numbers ever. I remember this. This was during CPAC. Um, I'd like to move 134 into evidence this time. Any objection? I don't see the relevance, Your Honor, frankly. Uh, food uh, processing we'll, numbers in 2020. I will make that connection very quickly. If you want to see what I would like or discuss it, then check in. Um, so the only objection is relevance. Uh, Mr. Jones has recognized it, so I will overrule the objection and admit plaintiffs exhibit 134. Let's go ahead and bring up the poll. One of the things that I think we've heard a lot of in this courtroom is how you've lost millions, lost everything, and the deplatforming, all of it, has, has caused you to lose everything, right? You've heard that? Not everything. Indeed. Can we bring up this level, Melissa? Now, we've seen some revenue numbers. You remember that in uh, Plaintiff's Exhibit 35 that you testified about? Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. And in those revenue figures, you would agree with me that generally, generally speaking, between 2016 and 2018, InfoWars was making somewhere between $100 and $2,000 a day in sales. Yes. That? Okay. And we see here that that's not always true, is it? That some days... You're making eight hundred thousand, seven hundred and forty-five thousand dollars a day, right? Yeah, you you guys cherry picked the best numbers we ever had. That's why I remember this. Right, Mr. Jones. So what I'm saying is, well after your deplatforming, your numbers kept getting better. You kept having better days. No, you didn't. Well, no, we didn't. It's, it's deplatforming. It's gone down. This 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 was uh, this was uh, no, 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 Sure. But, you know, the problem is, Mr. Jones, I have the very limited years of revenue that you've provided, but I don't have anything else, do I, from you on that? Not until this, right? You guys have been given the gross numbers that they're accurate. Okay, Mr. Jones. $800,000 a day, if you cut that pace up, which I don't know what you did the rest of the year, I don't have it. Well, that's one day out of here. I'm asking you, Mr. Jones, please let me finish my question. Can you do that for me? You need to respond verbally so she understands. Yes. So type it down. Thank you, Mr. Jones. If you're able to keep up that pace for the rest of that year, you're able to launch more of these specials and sales, and you can keep going at $800,000 a day. That would come out to an average of something like three hundred million in a year. That's about right. Gross, yes. Three hundred million, and then I think we saw your revenues from twenty. So we saw a few months of twenty fifteen on the beginning of that document, right? Do you remember that document you, you relied on and testified about, Plaintiff's Exhibit 35? I mean, I saw it, yes. Okay. And it had a couple of months from 2015 on it, but not a whole lot of sales on that, right? I believe so. Okay. So we're mainly just talking about 2016, 2018, right? You remember that? 165 million. You remember testifying? Yes. Testifying? Okay. And I know you testified about your profit margins, but I think we've, we've seen that now, that, that you were saying that that's gross. So that maybe doesn't, we'd have to calculate what your profit is, right? But after seeing... I'm sorry, I need a yes or no. Yes. Thank but you. after seeing all of that, all of those millions and millions and millions, hundreds of millions, are you aware that your attorney has argued that this, 
This is what you should pay for the damages that your company admits under oath through your corporate representative at cost. Were you aware of that, Abella? Were you aware? Yes, I know we were. Um, Do you agree with it? Do Abella? I agree with it? A dollar. Is that? We done? I'll pay it for you. Are we done? What does the New York Times do for lying about WMDs? I don't think there's any point in asking you any more questions. Okay. All right, Mr. Reynolds. Yeah, for sure. Me? Briefly. Yes. Wait. You've trusted your lawyers to produce the relevant documents? Yes. You've cooperated with us in every way? Yes. And you've trusted us to do a good job and turn over what we need to turn over? Yes. When we're supposed to turn it over? Yes. No further questions. Anything else, Mr. Bankston? No, I think we've done this, Mr. Johnson. to uh, send my jury back. You know the drill by now. If you have questions for Mr. Jones, and only if, this is an opportunity, not a requirement, you may each individually write them down. Um, I would like to go ahead and finish this before lunch. So go ahead and, and do those questions. Any questions you have uh, right at the beginning of the break. Remember all of my instructions. There can be no conversation between you about anything that has happened so far. All right, you may be excused. All rise. not so far away that we can't get you. Does that right, make sense? Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Um, everyone may be seated. Any other? I kind of just want to wait here for your questions. That's all. Um, hopefully get them to us. If you don't mind me using the restroom. I was just going to say, do, do people need a break? That would be great. Yeah. All right. Then we'll take uh, no more than 10 minutes if at all possible. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. All right. There's a theory called mass shooting contagion that posits the effect media has on inspiring future mass casualty events from coverage of previous events. Are the media that report on these events accountable for any damages that occur from their reporting? If the answer is yes, what accountability do you accept for the actions of your listeners and guests? And if the answer is no, why doesn't the free speech system capitalize on the opportunity to act better than the mainstream, in quotes, media by not asserting information recklessly in their reporting? And why does it not attempt to minimize harm from their reporting? That's question one. Question two. <clears throat> Uh, 
I know the world thinks of everything in law as criminal. This is a civil trial. No one is guilty. No one is convicted. So I wouldn't want to use the language that this jury uses in this question if I ask it. Free speech systems has already been convicted of defamation. However, it is important for me in the assessment of damages to hear an answer to the following. So all of that is just preamble anyway. In 2006, Christopher Hitchens, in an article for Slate magazine regarding the issue of worldwide news, worldwide news media that refused to publish cartoons that were deemed offensive to some members of the Muslim faith, an issue that later, in 2015, escalated with the slaying of 12 employees of Charlie Hebdo, stated, a civil society means that free expression trumps the emotions of anyone to whom free expression might be inconvenient. What are your thoughts on this statement? Um, so I don't like the, we can come back to it, but think about that. I don't think I can ask this question because I don't understand it. It says, what true you were looking from Sandy Hook tragedy? I, I just don't, I don't know what that <coughs> is trying to ask, unfortunately. Why do you think Sandy Hook was a conspiracy? Are you going to change the way you present your news or comments on your show based on what is happening today? Your employees have appreciated your ability to tell the truth and how you allow them to express their own creativity and individual personalities. In light of their obvious loyalty, would you take personal, personal responsibility for their actions and decisions while at work for FSS InfoWars? If you are genuinely sorry and regretful about how your words caused harm to grieving parents, how do you plan to show rather than just tell that you are sorry? Would you, for instance, join and promote Ms. Scarlett Lewis's Choose Love movement to help make our world a better place for our children? Going forward, would you consider providing better training to your employees about how to be sensitive to individuals involved in a tragic event while taking a stance on government or globalist agendas? As a person wary about and questioning authenticity of clipped videos, how much precaution do you plan to take with clipped videos presented on your own show? What dates were Exhibit 134 from? The defense has testified InfoWars mentioned Sandy Hook less than half a percent of the time. Is it your stance that there should be no punishment for breaking the law as long as it's only done on rare occasions? To your knowledge, was bankruptcy filed strategically to delay or alter court proceedings? <coughs> I don't think we can ask that. I don't think that's, I mean, I guess he said it. Well, he said I'm bankrupt, so I'm bankrupt. What is your definition of blue collar? And where did you get the idea that the jury are all blue collar? What compensation would you believe to be appropriate? Have you ever made the distinction while live on air to your viewers that you are speaking as a pundit and not as a journalist? What is your net worth? That's out. Are you aware that this jury consists of 16 intelligent, fair-minded citizens who are not being improperly influenced in any way? Do you feel you are getting a fair trial? If not, why not? How many employees does InfoWars have currently? What was the annual revenue of InfoWars in the most recent fiscal year? According to your most recent tax filing, what is your personal annual income? What are some specific changes you've made to your business processes to increase oversight and accountability at InfoWars? Do you believe that there will be a fair and impartial determination made by this jury? All right, let's do it the easy way and tell me what you object to first. Or anything? Uh, the, the one that's come to mind is the Charlie Hebdo question. It's kind of yeah. all over the place, and it, it brings into liability issues. And Charlie Hebdo is a 
not about facts, it's about a it's a cartoon. I mean, it's just all over the place. It, it, was, it was a lot. I think maybe Your Honor could just ask the, the end of it. I mean, we've been talking a lot about freedom of expression. I think it's a fair question. I'm trying to find it. Oh, that was the first one. <laughs> What are your thoughts on this statement? A civil society means that free expression trumps the emotions. The problem I have is um, I am concerned that this question without testimony from a legal expert or the like is going to lead the jury to think free speech is something it isn't. That, it's, that, that speech which is not protected in the United States is, and I don't want to confuse them with that. I don't think we have a legal expert coming in to talk about free speech because that issue is not actually relevant to damages. So for that reason, I am not going to ask that question. Um, I think that would, yeah, I think it will. What about the mass shooting contagion? Yeah, so is that the Christian Hitchens thing? Um, no, think. that's the one I just said. Okay, so that's also true. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those then are the one of the same. I think I'm okay with this. You want me to read it one more time? Sure. There is a theory called mass shooting contagion that posits the effect media has on inspiring future mass casualty events from coverage of previous events. Are the media that report on these events accountable for any damages that occur from their reporting? Okay. If yes, what accountability do you accept the actions of your listeners and guests? If no, why doesn't free speech systems capitalize on the opportunity to act better than the mainstream media uh, in quotes, by not asserting information recklessly in their reporting, and why does it not attempt to minimize harm from their reporting? Yeah, no objection. Okay. Why do you think Sandy Hook was a conspiracy? Are you going to change the way you present news comments on your show based on what's happening today? Uh, the question about the employees. I guess the way it's written, it's okay because they're asking him about personal responsibility. I, you know, I worry a little bit about the jury thinking the company is not responsible for the actions of its employees. But it's phrased and then there's the question about if you are genuinely sorry and regretful etc how do you plan to show rather than just tell that you are sorry are you going to join and promote Miss Lewis's choose love movement I guess that's okay would you consider providing better training to your employees about how to be sensitive to individuals involved in a tragic event? Well, taking us, I guess that's fine. And then there's the question of the videos. What dates were Exhibit 134 from? I mean, I assume that's contained on the exhibit itself. We'll just let them look at that and they go back. A uh, question about punishing rare things. Blue collar, any objection to that? No, you're right. Compensation, that's fine. That one's fine. Yes. Do have any objection to the jury? I mean, are you aware that this jury consists of 16 intelligent, fair minded citizens who are not being properly influenced in any way? That's fair. I'm not really sure if, I, you know, I try to think of these questions in two ways. One, how, what would my ruling be if one of you asked them? I'm not sure that I would allow this question if one of you asked them because that video was played for impeachment. Um, do you feel you're getting a fair trial? If not, why not? How many intel wars, excuse me, how many employees? That one's fine. All right, what was the annual revenue of InfoWars in the most recent fiscal year? I think that's fair under the evidence that's come in. Uh, what is your personal annual income? 
think to your most recent tax filing. I think maybe we should wait on that one. Anyone going to argue about that? Are, are, are we going to have the possibility, based on your honors prior rulings, to have Mr. Jones back during the network phase of the case? I honestly hadn't even considered that that would happen. Well, no, because you said we wanted to delay. I mean, we plan to call. You do? Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Okay. Sorry, um, you're I just, no, I not, I'm not reacting to him. I'm reacting to time. the time. Right. But we uh, think they're both going to be very short witnesses. We certainly hope so. Very All right. Short. So then, yes, is the answer. So okay. he can answer that one. Uh, changes to the business. And do you believe there will be a fair and impartial determination? I think that that might be duplicative of another question. It is. And so I'm not going to ask it twice. All right, on the record, we've gone over the questions submitted by the jury. We've eliminated some, um, and I will be reading some. Any objections to those I will be reading? Mm -hmm. Mr. Bankston. None from the plaintiff's jury. Mr. Rinal, same question. None from the defense. All right, let's bring the jury in so we can all go to lunch. Oh, and the witness. You'll call on Mr. Jones, please, Deputy. Thank you. Mr. Jones in now and then move the jury. Okay, well then we need Mr. Jones. studies do show that hyping up shootings causes more shootings and talking about the shooters does that and 
I, I think that all, all the media contributes to, to, to copycats, but they have a First Amendment right, and it's just part of the world we so live I in. So I want to just ask you to answer the question. Are the media that report on these events accountable for any damages that occur from their reporting? No. Okay. If no, why doesn't free speech systems capitalize on the opportunity to act better than the, quote, mainstream media, unquote, by not asserting information recklessly in their reporting? And why does it not attempt to minimize harm from their reporting? I agree. I've, I've learned a lot more about mass shootings now, and that's why we have one one hundredth the coverage of Uvalde we would normally have. And uh, I think that was even too much. But you've got to still report something happened, but statistically it's terrible what happens, but it's very small compared to, say, automobile accidents. So I, I, mean, I think we should report on what the big death numbers are, like famine worldwide, 60 plus million have died just the last three years. All right. So Thank I, you, Mr. Jones. Why do you think Sandy Hook was a conspiracy? Because I had seen so many other things in history that were declassified that had been staged or completely made up. Uh, that when you're a hammer, everything starts looking like a nail. And I saw really powerful forces politicize it and blame gun owners. And so I guess at a conscious level, I felt offended. I knew I was innocent and that I hadn't done what Adam Lanza did. So I think we subconsciously didn't want to believe it because it was being blamed collectively on gun owners. And that's in retrospect years later when I realized that I, I did used to go overboard and, and believe everything was staged or almost everything. Uh, and so it's definitely been a learning process uh, in uh, dealing with that. But that's, that, I mean, that's why I thought it was staged. There were people out there that brought up things that sounded credible. And I'd seen so much stuff that was, uh, you know, seen so much stuff that. Uh, All right. Thank you. You're just uh, going back over what you are. Yes. Are you going to change the way you present your news and comments on your show based on what is happening today? Yes, I'm going to do my best because I've never been like the corporate media that lies on purpose. Uh, but we've definitely made big mistakes and it's been terrible for everybody involved, uh, including myself. And so I really do want to try to change uh, things and uh, hopefully be a more positive force when it comes to issues like mass shootings. Your employees have appreciated your ability to tell the truth and how you allow them to express their own creativity and individual personalities. In light of their obvious loyalty, would you take personal responsibility for their actions and decisions while at work for free speech systems and InfoWars? I mean, I think at the end of the day, I, I mean, I do, I am responsible for what they do. Thank you. If you are genuinely sorry and regretful about how your words caused harm to grieving parents, how do you plan to show rather than just tell that you are sorry? Would you, for instance, join and promote Ms. Lewis's Choose Love movement to help make our world a better place for our children? Absolutely, regardless of how this goes. I would love to invite her on the show in person uh, next week. I would invite uh, her and uh, Neil, I think she's a great person. I apologize to you legitimately. I would love to invite you guys on the show regardless. So you can actually come meet the people, come on. And I think it'll be huge for everybody to see that. And I want that. I, I'm more concerned about that than I'm even monetary stuff. Um, and because I do not want to be the Sandy Hook guy. And, and I want to show the world that, that, that what's been misrepresented is not who I am, but that I have done some things that are wrong, and I didn't do it on purpose, and I apologize, and I want to make it better. Because so, okay, going forward, would you consider providing better training to your employees about how to be sensitive to individuals involved in a tragic event while still taking a stance on government or globalist agendas? Yes, absolutely, and, and we, we've been trying to do that, and... I was planning to shut down InfoWars six years ago when I got married, I promised my wife, I love the crew, I'm sick of this, and then I got stuck in this fight with the system and everything else that's going on, and okay. now, now I'm going to continue InfoWars to make it even better, and because other people have said they want to use this case to shut right, me down. you, again, don't tell us anything about anyone else has said. I understand. That is hearsay, disregard any hearsay, and I want you just to really, just answer the question. Oh, yes. Nothing else. 
As a person wary about and questioning the authenticity of clipped videos, how much precaution do you plan to take with the clipped videos presented on your own show? We take way more precaution now than even mainstream media because our listeners get mad if we put something out that's fake. And it, it, it has been a long time since we did that. And we, we did do one three weeks ago, and I rarely smash stuff, but I did smash it in my office. And because it pissed me off so bad that we aired a, uh, what do you call those, uh, deep fake video, they're so good now, that I, I just, I've declared, I've developed an allergy to this stuff. Like, I don't want to be wrong, and I don't want to try to lie like the corporate media does on purpose. And we did air one uh, about the CEO of Pfizer, who does enough bad stuff on his own without us putting it. We didn't do it. It looked so good on Twitter that we put a fake video out. All right. Thank you. The defense has testified InfoWars mentioned Sandy Hook less than half a percent of the time. Is it your stance that there should be no punishment for breaking the law as long as it is done only on rare occasions? Uh, okay, can you read that again, please? Yes, I can. The defense has testified InfoWars mentioned Sandy Hook less than half a percent of the time. Is it your stance that there should be no punishment for breaking the law as long as it's done only on rare occasions? Well, this is, this is civil, but there is a law of right and wrong, and we have paid a massive price for the mistakes we made. Okay, Mr. Jones. Yes, read it again, please. Is it your stance that there should be no punishment for breaking the law as long as it's done only on rare occasions? Yes or no? That's, uh, well, it's, it's not, no, I don't think, even the people do stuff on accident, I think they're still somewhat culpable, uh, but I did not do this consciously. No, Mr. Jones, right. that's not the question. I'm, what I'm, is your definition of blue collar? I'm talking about people who I think are great, who are working so hard that they don't have time to be involved in the weird esoteric bubbles uh, of the liberals or the conservatives or anybody. I can't even keep track of what the liberals are doing or the conservatives, the libertarians or the or the transhumanists. So and, your definition of blue collar is people who work so hard they can't follow all these things you're saying. What is your definition of blue collar? My definition of blue collar is the working man and woman who keep their head down and keep the whole world running and, and, and in my experience generally are not even paying attention to politics. Where did you get the idea that jury are all blue collar? I mean, I've seen statistically, uh, I read in news articles in Austin that a lot of times it's... It, it's okay, don't, don't tell us what you've read, remember? Where did I hear? No. What did I think? Yeah, it's a bad question. Where did you get the idea? Because if, if, the, if the place you got the idea is from someone else, then you can't tell us that. So it, it's a tricky question for me to ask you. I'll agree with that. Um, okay. What compensation would you believe to be appropriate? What compensation do I think appropriate? Despite these numbers that were presented the best week we ever had, that's when COVID was starting, and there was a run on storable food nationwide, uh, and so they... Mr. Jones. No, I'm, I'm just saying... I, I, we don't... Well, speaking of conversation, conversation, would you believe to be appropriate? It doesn't really matter about that. It's I understand, but, but I can answer the question however I wish. I'm not barred from talking about where, where we're at financially. No, you are at this stage. Right now, the question is what compensation would be appropriate? Any compensation above $2 million will sink us and will that, that, be, will no, be no, shut down. No, appropriate, not to you. <coughs> Appropriate for what happened to them. I mean, I mean, I think it's appropriate for whatever, whatever uh, you decide you want to do, okay. and because I'm, I'm really. Uh, That's a great answer. Thank you. Have you ever made the distinction while live on air to your viewers that you are speaking as a pundit and not as a journalist? Thousands and thousands of times. That this is my opinion. You should research what I'm saying. All this stuff we're covering is other people's opinions. You need to look into this. When I'm really sure about something, I'll be definitive about it sometimes, and I'm usually right. Uh, but we constantly, I mean, this is talk radio on TV. 
we constantly explain these are people's opinions, these are debates, these are ideas. We, we, in fact, I even used to play an intro that said the, the views expressed here aren't necessarily those of the host, the guests, the callers, or the station. It's a standard thing. Are you aware that this jury consists of 16 intelligent, fair-minded citizens who are not being improperly influenced in any way? Yes, I don't think that you are operatives. I don't think that you are part of a false flag. I don't think that uh, you are bad people. I think you're good people. And I just am very, very critical about the whole process that I've been through so far, where I've given, I believed everything over. And then I'm always told we didn't, even though we're seeing it. And so that's why I'm really concerned, uh, because a lot has been misrepresented. Wandered off the question. Okay. Do, no, you, do you feel you're getting a fair trial, and if not, why not? But I'm barred from saying. Succinctly, please. I have been found guilty by a judge, and I thought in America you're we found guilty by juries or innocent. There's no guilty or innocence in civil. I understand. Liable or not, not well, guilty. So please don't use the. You're not a lawyer. That's fine. Okay. Well, I've been found liable. Okay. So by a judge, and 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 in all the other cases coming up, I've already been found. So this is a dangerous new system they're setting up. And if people want to get rid of that and get rid of America, it's okay. I understand. We're an old republic. Maybe time for us to go. Okay. But how, you, how many employees does InfoWars have currently? We've got about 80 workers and contractors, and well, about 80. <coughs> what was the annual revenue of InfoWars in the most recent fiscal year? I don't have that number in front of me, but it was, I would imagine, 60, 70 million. Those have been our biggest years, or 60 or 70 million gross. and. So if, if the question is, how much money am I making? No. The question is, what was the annual revenue of InfoWars in the most recent fiscal year? But I think you said you don't know. Do you know or not? I, 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 I um, it is like $70 million right around there. What are some specific changes you've made to your business processes to increase oversight and accountability at InfoWars? I mean, I, I think uh, I've explained to people we're not just some little internet show, and I'm telling myself this when I'm telling them that, that you need to really pay attention to what you're doing because everything you say is going to get looked at and zoomed in on, and even if you didn't mean it for harm, it can be turned around for harm, so you need to really realize you have power. It's like the Spider-Man thing with great power comes great responsibility, and I definitely have un underestimated how powerful InfoWars was because I'm always thinking of myself as small, and 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 and, and you know, and then I've re only realized the last four or five years how big we are. Thank you, Mr. Jones. I appreciate your time and testimony. You may return to council table. Thank you. I do not, Your Honor. So, defense rests? Yes, Your Honor. Plaintiff rests and close? Correct, Your Honor. Defense rests and close? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, that concludes the evidence in this case. It is now necessary for the attorneys and myself to spend some time preparing the charge for submission to you. I'm not able to know in advance exactly how long it will take. It generally takes longer than we think. Uh, we have been working on it in the evenings and on breaks, but we do still have more work to do. It's 1230. I'm going to try to get it done over lunch. Um, your lunch is waiting for you. So I'm not going to give you an end time. We'll try to be back um, in an hour, hour and a half, so you know, don't wait to eat. Uh, but you're going to be on recess until now, uh, until I bring you back. Please remember, 
the evidence is concluded, but you have not yet been sent to deliberate. This means you may not yet discuss the case. And as always, you still may not do any research into anything about the case. So go and enjoy your lunch, and we'll see you as soon as we can. Thank you. All rise. So maybe I can just see, because the defense counsel may very well agree. Sure. Is, um, I, I think from some of the testimony today, the jury may be a little bit confused about responding out superior principles. And there's a there's a PJC on responding out. And just to have that instruction in the initial charge section on your 1 through 12. Can you point me to the part? Sure. Of the, I think I have the PJC. Is it general answer. negligence? I think it's in general negligence, correct, Joe? Or business, maybe. I don't know. Which, which provision? I'm pulling it up. I hope I have the same I got no other answer. Fortunately, Your Honor, I'm just an email by the other on the planet. Uh, PJC 10 1. Uh, you know what, Your Honor? Now that I'm looking at these, these are questions, and so therefore. Yeah, this would be appropriate, for instance, if Owen Shorter was on the line. Uh -huh. But now that I'm looking at this, I, this is not appropriate if he's not on the line. Okay. It's, it's a question, so we'll withdraw it. All right. <coughs> there might be something else. I mean, the books are very long. Dang. Sure, sure. Yeah, I don't, you know, and I'm, I'm thinking both parties were close to happy with this. I don't. All right. Street charges are dicey. Yeah. Wait, I apologize. If anyone's desperate for a comfort break, as Judge Livingston likes to say, feel free to take it. I'm going to hang out here until we get those copies out.
Thank you. All right, Ms. Ford, it's going to bring you um, the uh, version three to take a look at. And because we're on a little bit of a time crunch, I would like to, to take a look at it now. Uh, when you're ready, let me know. Something. Sure. I had one comment you wanted to bring to your attention, which is that um, in the proximate cause definition, which we're okay with, um, but there are, in the PJC, there are certain words that are italicized, and if you're given a choice, you can use a couple different words. Sometimes injury is not appropriate in every what? case. Sometimes ordinary care is not appropriate in every case. Just spell it out. But in this I, case... What happened? It's still here. Oh, I, I did. I did imply take it out. I thought those were already removed. Okay. I don't think we need any italics to be used. Correct. Uh, uh, once the word is chosen, it, the italics does not work. Right. Anyway. Sorry, I was not clear. I wasn't clear. I think I said something like, I don't like the italicized words instead of removed, like unitalicized. But that's exactly. what I meant. No, I mean, so. just that was just a note. Okay, yeah. So that's in all three questions. Uh, no words will be italicized in the definition of approximate cause. Other than that, plaintiffs have no objection to the charge. No to defense. Okay, well, let's put that on the record. Excellent. Were you ready? Yes. Okay, we've just had one of our informal charge conferences, and there are some words in the version you have, version 3, which are italicized, and we are going to remove that italicized. We're going to remove the italics and put those in normal font, and then that will be the final version. Other than that, there are no other edits to be made. Do you accept this charge of the court as um, proper, Mr. Bankston? Yes, the pleasure to see you. Mr. Rainell? Yes, Your Honor. Wonderful. We can go off the record. I'll let you go make those changes. May I uh, and we'll, one we'll, more thing on the record? Uh, let me finish my sentence. <laughs> we will bring out new copies during the break for you that say final on the bottom so that you'll have them. Do you want more than one? If, if it pleases the court. I'm, I'm asking because I'm willing to print more than one for you. Would you like it? Yes? Please. Thank you. We one is fine. Yes. One is fine. All right. I'll give you both. Okay. Um, a lot of times clients actually like a copy at the end, so, uh, so so they know what I'm talking about when I read things off. Um, yes, on the record, Mr. Reno. wanted to renew my uh, motion for directing verdict. Okay. That's, that is still fine. Okay. We will back off the record. It's 1240. Can we be ready to start at 130? I think that's fine. So that'll give us two and a half hours, right? 1.30 to 3, 3.30 to 5. That's is that two and a half or is that three? Really bad math. You mean, so you've got that's three hours. That's, yeah, three. that's three hours. hours. Can we get our closing done in three hours? Just for the time of No. That's easy. <laughs> so, yeah.
So, do I need to put some time limits on or time warnings on to make sure we have enough time to, to do all the reclosings? I think I'm totally fine, but if you give me a 15 minute warning. 5-0? 5-0. I think I'll actually be shorter than that anyway, but go ahead and get that out of there and go along. All right. Your Honor would let me know at an hour. Okay. Okay. So, um, we're going to have a 30 minute break in the middle, an hour and a half. I, I'm trying, I'm not, um, yes, I'm not good at the 60 40 bit, but let's assume that that uh, division applies here as it has throughout the trial. So, whatever that is, I'll do the math in the back. Just you guys can do it too and know that that's going to be our our time. Okay? And I'll, I'll let them know. Well, then that, I, if you would give me a 10 minute warning based on whatever time. Sure, I can do I think an hour is probably uh, exactly right, meaning an hour and 10 minutes is probably how it breaks down, but I'll do the math in the back. This is all, yeah, the next okay, uh, thank you all. We'll see you in 50 minutes. All rise.